The following NBC Sports program is brought to you in living color. Hi, I'm Joe Namath of the New York Jets. The Baltimore Colts will win today's Super Bowl game. I can't guarantee it, but I definitely think the Colts will win. to you by Chrysler Corporation, extra care in engineering. Your host today, your local Dodge Chrysler Plymouth dealer. This is the Orange Bowl. It'll be jammed 80,000 fans today, the pro football capital of the world, Super Bowl day, the culmination of the long season that began last September and winds up this afternoon. Only a half hour now, count down to the kickoff in beautiful Miami. Hi everybody, this is Kurt Gowdy along with Joe Namath here in Miami. We're waiting for the start of Super Bowl V. Because of the demands and pressures of getting ready for this game, we have pre-taped this show in the outdoor studios of WCKT here in Miami. Anyone who recalls that Joe Namath two years ago personally guaranteed a victory for the New York Jets over the Baltimore Colts will be interested in his observations today. I don't know what you've read. You've read and heard a lot of things about Joe. Believe me, he is a serious student of football. He's a brilliant theorist. And after spending hours with him looking at these films, I can tell you that he can really take a pro football team and pick it apart. It's not just he's quick release in the Army you've heard about. He has a fine football mind. Joe, today it's the Baltimore Colts, champs of the American Conference, the Dallas Cowboys, champs of the National Conference. An old AFL team is not here today. Do you think it's taken a little sting out of the game? Well, I think it has, Kurt. Uh, in the old days, well, the old days, last year and years prior to that when we had the two conferences, the owners were always arguing with each other, uh, the commissioners were arguing with each other, the players disliked each other, and it gave a lot of add a lot of excitement to this game. And uh, without an a AFL team in there, I think it does lack a little bit. Well, now, generally, how does it stack up to you before we really get down to details? Well, I think the Cowboys, well, I know the Cowboys have a tremendous running game, and uh, Baltimore has a pretty good running game. Not that outstanding. However, Baltimore's passing attack is head and shoulders above Dallas's because Craig Morton simply hasn't been able to throw the ball the last four or five weeks. And it's not because he can't. He's had a sore arm. He's had more injuries to his arm. And uh, this is going to cause him a big problem. All right, we'll be back here with Joe Namath and a preview of Super Bowl V right after this message. Hey, Ducky. Hey, look at what I got. A brand new dark swinger. Ain't she a beauty? I done heard about it. See, I got this special deal down to Dodge Boys. I got the... Hubert, turn in your badge. Say so what? There's one thing I can't stand so law officer accepted preferential treatment. You mean a bribe? I mean a special deal. White side walls, wheel covers, vinyl roof, and all that stuff. But I paid for all that. Wait, look at the sticker. And the automatic transmission? Well, what about the automatic transmission? What did it cost you? Nothing! Give me the badge, Buford. That's part of the Swinger Automatic Special, J.W. Special equipped Dodge Dart comes with the automatic transmission at no extra charge. Go ask them. Ask them, young self, you entitled to one phone call. Well, now the new Swinger Automatic Special. So great last year, we brought it back for seconds. See it at your Dodge dealer today. Much obliged, Dodge boys. Well, Joe, the uh, Dallas Cowboys arrived here by beating the 49ers in the National Football Conference Championship while the Colts got here by defeating the Oakland Raiders in the American Football Conference Championship. Did the results of those two championship games surprise you at all? Well, one of them did. I thought that Oakland would beat Baltimore, of course, when uh, Daryl Monica got hurt in the second quarter, I think. Uh, not take away anything from George Blander, but George can't throw as well as Daryl, and I think that hurt Oakland's chances. And in the uh, 49er game, I didn't really feel that the 49ers' defense was strong enough to uh, contain Dallas's running game, and they weren't. So uh, the Dallas game went about according to plan. Well, over 60 million people who will be viewing today's game know that Dallas has a tremendous running game. Play the ball control running style of game against the 49ers to beat them. 
Do you think that the Dallas Cowboys will be able to run effectively against the Baltimore Colts? Well, they have a great running game, so they'll be able to run some, but I don't think they'll be able to run effectively enough. Uh, Baltimore has a tremendous defense, and uh, I think they'll cut off Dallas's running game pretty good. This boy, Dwayne Thomas, who is... Tom Landry's called him the greatest running back in the history of the Cowboys, only his first year. They're already comparing him to Jimmy Brown. What do you think about him? Well, it's no doubt that he's a great athlete. He's uh, done wonders for the Dallas team so far this year. And uh, there are a couple other young backs that are also tremendous, like Ron Johnson from the Giants and O.J. Simpson. But uh, people might tend to overlook the other half of the Dallas running game, Walt Garrison. I think Garrison does a tremendous job for the Cowboys. Who should we watch for with Baltimore to help stop this running game of Dallas? Well, as I said, they're experienced. They're a very tough uh, defensive unit. They work together well. I don't think Dallas will be running too much at Bubba Smith. I think they'll be running to the other side of the line towards Like Hilton. you did against Baltimore two right, years ago. Right, not necessarily because Hilton's weak, but I think uh, Bubba Smith is that strong. They respect him that much, and so I think they'll be running the left side of the line more. And the... Uh Baltimore linebackers uh, play well, play the run well, don't they? Yes, they do, but I think they play the pass better than they play the run. They're all very active, and uh, it's Ted Hendricks trying to throw over him. is like trying to throw yeah. over a skyscraper. And, of course, Mike Curtis uh, has good movement, and, and Ray May is a fine all-around linebacker. They coordinate very well in pass coverage. Oh, you think Dallas can run against Baltimore, but they're not going to tear him apart? I think they can run a little bit on them. I don't think they're going to run uh, all day long. All right. Now, two out of every three yards Baltimore has gained this year has been in the air. Now, can Baltimore pass, work their passing game against a defense that's allowed only one uh, touchdown in the last 25 quarters? Well, the biggest thing about Baltimore's passing, Kurt, is Johnny Unitas. He's done such a great job this year at throwing the ball where the defenders aren't. Of course, Johnny needs the protection. He'll have to have his offensive line doing a great job to keep Dallas out of there. And if the line does do their regular job, I think uh, Johnny will be able to throw on Dallas pretty good. They have uh, not only a great pair of wide receivers in Hinton and Jefferson, but uh, some backup men. They can flood four wide receivers in a game at one time. Right, and, and this is what also makes uh, Baltimore's passing game more effective. They have Perkins backing up uh, Hinton and Jefferson, and they have Jimmy Orr, who still has that experience. And, uh, of course, Mitchell backs up Mackey. They have probably the finest group of receivers in all of football. Speaking of Perkins, he's an old Alabama teammate of yours, isn't he? Yes, he is. Raymond is, and uh, for Dallas, Leroy Jordan and Dennis Hallmer are old teammates. Two on one club and one on the other. Right. I think I have to be pulling for Dallas only because of that. Now you're pulling for Dallas and picking Baltimore. That's right. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Joe, let me ask you something. Uh, we talk about this game and all the talk recently. It still always gets back to the name of Unitas. Didn't you wear Unitas as number 19 when you were in high school at Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania? Yes, I did, and uh, they used to call me Joey U. Joey U. Uh, right. <laughs> well, I didn't live too far from Johnny back there, I guess about 40 miles apart, and Johnny was a legend, and he still is a legend in that area, and I respect the man tremendously, and uh, it was a thrill for me just to be wearing number 19. Now, Joe, we're going to put you in quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys and let you go to work against the Baltimore defense, and we're going to move you over to the Baltimore team and let you try and pick apart the Dallas defense, and we'll do that right after this message. The Salt of Peanut Theory. It starts with a single peanut. You try it. Mm, you'll like it. You come back for more. For years, we've been selling Chryslers this way. People buy one. They like it. They come back for more. All we have to do is to get you into that first Chrysler. So, we're coming through with a brand new series of full-sized Chryslers, a special introductory offer, at a new low price, a Royal. Royal is our way of introducing as many people as possible. The Chrysler luxury, quality, and value. New Chrysler Royal. New low price, Royal. The easiest way yet to acquire the Chrysler taste. Here comes Chrysler, coming through. Here comes Chrysler. Now let's take Johnny Unitas out as quarterback for Baltimore for two or three minutes, put Joe Namath in. Uh, Joe, you're now running the Baltimore attack against this famed Dallas defense. First of all, Dallas has a very fine front floor. They put a lot of pressure on the... Uh, passing game in the quarterback. What would you do against the pass rush of Dallas? 
Well, I think Johnny is uh, going to have to throw the ball quicker. He'll throw uh, shorter patterns, I think. And I think he's going to have to establish a draw player screen, Kurt, because you've got to slow down those fellas. Bob uh, Lilly is tremendous. He's at 74. Great. Yeah. He is great, yes. And Larry Cole is doing a great job for him. So he'll have to mix up his plays uh, with the screens and the draws. And I think uh, they might use four receivers and try and get a one-on-one -on -one situation with uh, Waters, the free safety, the young kid. Now there's Mel Renfro, an all-pro cornerback. Have you seen anything where Unitas will be able to find some flaws in that Dallas secondary? Well, I think the only flaw they have uh, is the fact that you can tell what they're going to do uh, a good percentage of the time before they do it. And with Johnny's experience and knowledge of the game, I think this is going to be a tremendous asset to the passing game. What do you, when you, what's your key to tell what they're going to do? Well, it depends on the team you're playing against. And uh, with Dallas, there's a couple of people. I hate to say who they are, actually, that, that give you the key because uh, we'll probably have to play next year. Right. But uh, you can tell when you come up to the line of scrimmage just the way a man lines up or very often just the way a guy's looking at you, what, what they're going to do. Dallas going to play zone, man-to-man, -man, or both? I think they'll, do, they'll use both. Uh, Dallas will double cover both wide receivers at times, or they have in the past. Now, I don't know if they want to do that and hang the linebackers up one-on-one -on -one with Mackey, because Mackey's a tremendous receiver. Fans can look for two defenders covering one wide man, two in the other, which might release the big tight end Mackey down the middle. Right. The linebackers will try and hold Mackey up at the line of scrimmage, but uh, he's a big man. If he gets free, he'll be dangerous. Of course, United's very quick spotting these things, and... Uh, he probably will do what he sees in the Dallas defense. Right. Now, as I said earlier, that's the biggest asset of Baltimore's passing attack. Johnny is so quick at reading the, uh, the defensive alignment, et cetera. Joe, uh, psychologically, as a quarterback, uh, how important is it going to be to score first in this game? I think it's very important to Baltimore uh, in this respect. Dallas doesn't have that explosive offense that they used to have. If Baltimore scores early, Dallas... Uh, may have to try and catch up to them, but they won't leave their game plan early in the game. However, if uh, Dallas gets on the board early, I don't think that's going to change much of Baltimore's thinking at all. We saw that sort of in the Ohio State-Stanford game. Where, right. Uh, Stanford got ahead, and Ohio State, a ground team, then tried to pass and catch up, just couldn't quite do it. That's right. And if uh, Dallas, or if Craig Morton was healthy, if he could throw, then possibly they could do it. But I think they'll be in trouble if they get behind. Well, we ask you uh, the importance of scoring first. And we also ask psychology how important scoring early was Johnny Unitas and Craig Morton. So uh, you're going to probably try and get quick, aren't you? Strike quick if you can. As quick as we possibly yeah, can. Yeah, you're going to get on top. You think that's going to be a big key, don't you? Well, if we go out right now, we probably could beat him. No one else on the field. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you like to get out. You like to get on top any time. I mean, this this type of team you're playing is the type of team you like to get ahead of. Well, we like to get ahead of everybody, like you said, but uh, if we can get a quick one, we're sure love, we'll love to have it. Well, I think that uh, our whole philosophy of offense has kind of been switched from a, a wide open type of uh, get rich quick plays to the more steady ground game, uh, trying to establish that uh, we do have a powerful front line and we have some excellent running backs. And so we always like to feel that uh, we can control the game by running. And by doing this, uh, we limit the defensive time on the field. and. Uh, consequently, we have more plays, and it uh, has turned out to be a real successful force the last seven weeks. Oh. Well, Craig Morton says he's going to take his time against that Baltimore zone. They're hard to throw deep on. Now, Joe Namath, let's put you over as the Dallas quarterback. How would you attack Baltimore? Well, first he wants to get his running game going. There's no doubt about that. And I don't think he's going to be able to get it going too successfully. So he's going to have to throw the football. And with as much respect as the Dallas running game has, I think the best pass is he'll utilize or call will be play action passes where we'll fake to a running back and then turn around and throw the ball to somebody uh, 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 we're going to look for him early maybe to fake that run they're looking for the run and raise up and maybe try and hit a big one early right he could go for the big one or uh the linebackers of baltimore really have to respect the run of dallas so they're going to have to stay in a little tight so there should be an open area be between the linebackers behind them and the secondary so you can look for bob hayes or dennis holman to be squaring in in those areas. Is that what you did two years ago? Yeah, we did a lot of that with George Sire. In between the linebackers and the deep second. Right. They kept rotating their zone uh, because of the threat we had with Maynard, and so we just went the other way with Sire. Now, the uh, Colts have a great pass rusher in their left end, Bubba Smith. He didn't bother you fellas too much. Uh, Snell picked him up many times. But uh, he's big and strong, and he comes barreling in there. Morton's not too agile behind the line as he sets up. 
What would you do against a big pass rusher like Bubba Smith of Baltimore? Well, I'd say a prayer before the game. <laughs> uh, we always do that. And uh, I know I'd tell my tackle to help out a lot. Dave Herman, who blocked Bubba in the Super Bowl a few years ago, did a great job on him. Bubba, I don't think, however, is going to be too concerned with the pass. I think the whole Baltimore line will be more concerned with the running plays, and uh, Craig will probably have time to pass unless he has to pass. Then Baltimore will start coming after him. Well, they say Dallas is a winning team without a quarterback. Uh, he was ineffective with passing efficiency his last three or four games. But he's had a bum elbow. There's something wrong with him, and uh, they say he's been throwing much better this week. Do you think Morton is physically capable of having a big day throwing? I know Craig for a few years now. I've seen him... Uh, play ever since he's in college and he had a tremendous arm he could throw the football as well as anybody and better than most but uh, something has definitely happened to his arm over the last six or seven weeks he is injured and no one knows how it's going to be for the game all right john we'll be back here with a wrap-up right after this message okay just go on back oh! What do you mean, don't worry? What have you done to my car, lady? Nothing. It was nothing. Nothing. You call that nothing? The car's only two days old. Oh, it looks very new. Looks new. Oh, lady, you just hit the newest of the new cars. Out of a whole parking lot, you got to run into my new Plymouth satellite. But I didn't hit your new expensive car. She did. She did. Oh, she did. Satellite isn't really expensive. In fact, it's very low priced. I'm terribly sorry. You... Oh, no damage done. Car with legs like that. Who's going to notice a little scratch? New Plymouth Satellite, America's lowest priced two-door intermediate. Based on manufacturer's suggested retail prices of satellite pictured and closest competitive models comparably equipped. <laughs> You know, Joe, after that uh, Baltimore-Oakland game, uh, Johnny Unitas did not have a high percentage of completion. And you commented to me, though, how he threw an almost perfect game. Either hit his receiver or the defender never touched the ball. Right. Johnny really impressed me in that game because uh, his throwing very often didn't look accurate to the spectator, but it was because he was throwing a lot of passes away. And if there was any chance of anyone getting to the ball, it was his own people. So today, if the fans see Unitas missing some passes, sometimes he's missing on purpose. Of course, keep the ball away from the defense. Well, we told Johnny Unitas what you said about that was one of the greatest performances you'd ever seen, and here's what he had to say as an answer. Well, we try not to throw it up for grabs. I try not to uh, get in a position where I have to force a ball in between two people. Uh, my arm's not as strong as it was 10, 12 years ago where I could take that opportunity and have maybe a, a throw, you know, drill it in through that hole. I don't have the speed on the ball that I once had, but I can still throw the outside without any problem. And uh, you tend to hold the ball a little bit longer, make sure the man gets a little bit more open than what you would like, uh, what you think he should be, you know. Well, you're being honest. What you're saying is uh, physically you can't pass the football as good as you did 10 years ago. Well, I can't put as much speed on it. Right. I could probably throw it better than what I could 10 years ago, but with not as much speed. I think Craig, of course, who's, who's an, uh, another Johnny Unitas, you know, he's got all the experience. Craig is just really beginning in his uh, career. Uh, he's had a lot of trouble this year, a lot of arm trouble. And uh, whenever a quarterback has arm trouble, you got troubles because he can't work during practice. He can't do the things that makes great timing. And uh, this has hurt him, and, and he's suffered for it. And we've had to compensate, uh, you know, in what we do uh, to, to offset it. Joe, do you agree with Tom Landry on that? I certainly do. Uh, timing phase of throwing a football is so important that uh, you have to get out there and work at it and work on it every day. And if Craig can't throw it, he certainly can't work on it. And he paid a compliment to Unitas on his experience. You're still a fairly young quarterback, but year by year, are you realizing how important experience is in pro football? I certainly do, Kurt. Uh, when I first came into football as a rookie, I thought that I could play professional football. I had confidence. I wasn't aware of all the intricacies of the game. Uh, the more you play, the older you get, you're still learning. Johnny, I, I know Johnny feels the same way. United, even though he's played 15, 16 years, uh, you find out something new every game. Well, you went through a Super Bowl time here two years ago, the two weeks of preparation. Baltimore's gone at it differently this time. They've left their wives at home, their families. They come down here with total concentration. So has Dallas. How much pressure is there on these players coming into this game? 
But if they got their wives with them, I'd imagine there's a whole lot more on them than would be without them. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of pressure on these guys. They're playing for the world championship. They may never get another opportunity to be here, and it's the ultimate for the professional football player to reach that goal, to be able to participate in the world championship game and win it. So uh, there's a tremendous amount of pressure on it. When you're in the locker room and somebody says, boys, it's just another ball game, it is, right? <laughs> there, huh? There's no way it's just another game. Uh, we're right here on artificial turf in this outdoor studio. What about artificial turf affecting the game? Baltimore's only played on it three times this year. Uh, Dallas has played on it all year. I don't think it'll have any bearing at all, Kurt, on the game. Uh, from what I've seen of the artificial turf, uh, I've liked it. Some players don't like it because uh, of an injury problem. They'll get scrapes and burns. But uh, usually, the footing has been great every time we've been on it, so I don't think it's going to have any bearing on the game. All right, one final wrap-up of your prediction and your general diagnosis of this game. Well, again, Kurt, I, I like the Baltimore Colts to win the game because they have the more balanced attack of the two. I don't think Dallas is going to be able to run the football on the coast the way they've been able to run against these past few teams that they've played. And, uh, of course, Johnny Unitas, with his experience, he's going to throw it to the right areas, and I think they'll move the ball on Dallas, and the field goal kickers are going to be very important in this game. Jim O'Brien for Baltimore and Clark for Dallas. Right, it could be decided by a field goal. Close game. It's definitely going to be close. Joe, we want to thank you very much. Uh, incidentally, you'll be able to see Joe Namath on the Flip Wilson Show on NBC, February 4th. You've noticed the cast on his hand. Uh, most of you know he broke his hand the fourth game of the year. It's still in the cast. A very slow uh, healing bone there in that right hand you injured, wasn't it? Yes, it is, Kurt. It's taken uh, a lot longer than I hoped it would take, and I'll get it examined again next week, and hopefully it's healed. Maybe you'll be unavailable for this show next year. You might be back in the Super Bowl as a player. Huh? You know, I hope you're right about that. We have a fine team, and... Uh, if we can stay healthy, if we have a little luck, we might be there next year. That's Joe Namath, the quarterback of the New York Jets, who's diagnosed and he's predicted the Baltimore Colts in a close game to defeat the Dallas Cowboys today. Now we're going to have a live update direct from the Orange Bowl and a unique way of looking at the starting lineups right after this message. We're proud of our 1971 Plymouths. They're the finest we've ever built. We're so proud, in fact, that we're making two special offers to make it easy for you to own one. First, there's the 1971 Fury V8 with new torsion quiet ride. To give it an extra big push, we've added a special package of popular options, including power steering, power brakes, and air conditioning. We're also pushing America's newest low-priced two-door hardtop, Valiant Scamp, with a special introductory package, including a vinyl roof, white walls, and a remote side view mirror. During our big push, if you buy either a specially equipped Fury or a specially equipped Valiant Scamp, we'll throw in the automatic transmission <coughs> at no extra charge. That's right, automatic transmission, no extra charge. That's Chrysler Plymouth coming through. <laughs> This was the Orange Bowl Stadium early this morning. And now, just before game time, it is already filled, 80,000 on hand. We're here in our NBC telecasting booth now, and believe me, it's been a tough ticket for this game. They've been scalping them for over $100 in the hotel lobbies and around Miami. The weather is going to be played in bright sunshine. It is cooler, though. It's been hot all week here in Miami but it cooled off yesterday. The temperature will be 65 degrees, an ideal climate for the players. And now we're going to take a unique look at the starting lineups as we match the offensive player against the defense. For Dallas in offense, number 22, wide receiver Bobby Hayes, a one-time world's fastest human who's the Cowboys' leading pass catcher. Matching with Hayes on defense for Baltimore is right cornerback Jim Duncan, number 35, who is the top kickoff return man in the American Conference. The Cowboys' other wide receiver is rookie Reggie Rucker, number 88, who's averaged better than 22 yards a catch. Rucker's pair on defense with Baltimore's left cornerback, Charlie Stoops, number 47. Tight end Pettis Norman of Dallas, number 84, is one of Coach Tom Landry's messengers. He carries in the plays along with the other tight end, Mike Ditka. 
Strong safety Jerry Logan of the Coast, number 20, who intercepted six passes during the season, will line up opposite the tight end. Rayfield Wright, number 70, is the starting right tackle for the Cowboys. And his duel with gigantic Bubba Smith, number 78, the Colts left end, should be something to watch. Blaine Nye, number 61, holds down right guard for Dallas. He's at his best pulling out of the line. Nye will be up against the wily Colt veteran left tackle, rough and tumble Billy Ray Smith, number 74. The Dallas center is Dave Manners, number 51. Right down the alley from him will be one of the most vicious tacklers in pro football, Mike Curtis, number 32. They don't call the Colt middle linebacker the animal for nothing. The left guard for Dallas, John Nyland, number 76. He's quick, an outstanding pass protector. Nyland draws the Colt right tackle, Fred Miller, number 76, who's more adept in stopping a run than a pass. Ralph Neely, number 73, is the Cowboys' left tackle. He's probably the top performer in the Dallas defensive line. Neely will be banging helmets with the Colts right end, Roy Hilton, number 85, who has developed into a fine pass rusher. Running back Dwayne Thomas, number 33, is a Dallas Rookie of the Year. He became a starter in the sixth game of the season and finished as a top Cowboy runner with 803 yards, the fifth best of the National Conference. Thomas had two exceptional playoff games, picking up a total of 273 yards in those two games. Paired with him is Baltimore's left linebacker, Ray May, number 56. The Dallas fullback, or running back, is Walt Garrison, number 32. He gained 500 yards during the season. And the Colts fast improving right linebacker, Ted Hendricks, number 83, will be across the line from Garrison. Quarterback Craig Morton of the Cowboys, number 14, threw 15 touchdown passes during the regular season. But his scattered arm statistics in the playoffs were dismal. Opposite Morton on defense for Baltimore is free safety Rick Volk, number 21, who intercepted four passes during the season. And that's the way they'll line up for the opening kickoff in Super Bowl V. All right, that's the lineup that you'll be seeing on the field as the Dallas Cowboys have won the toss they've elected to receive. And interestingly enough, we don't know how the wind is down in the field, but the flag shows that Dallas will all, uh, also have the advantage of the wind in the first period. But on the field, the wind may be a different factor. This is rated almost a dead even game. Dallas a two point or a one point favorite, the closest of the uh, pre game predictions we've had in the Super Bowl. They've all been one sided predictions before, and yet we've had two upsets the last two years. So it should be a dandy. And that's how it looks here from the Orange Bowl just before we move downfield. This Super Bowl special preview has been brought to you by Chrysler Corporation, extra care in engineering. Your host today, your local Dodge and Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Bridges, Gene Barry, and Diane Baker star in a chilling world premiere movie tomorrow at 9, 8 central time. Some airlines please some of the passengers some of the time. Their coach seats, though narrow, please quite a few people, but not everybody. On Continental Airlines, though, coach and economy seats on every 707 and 727 fan jet we fly are as wide as first class seats. That pleases all of our passengers all of the time. Do yourself proud on Continental Airlines. I know all about Santa Anita. People getting wildly emotional nine times a day. Yes, get wildly emotional nine times a day at Santa Anita now. Impossible. Try it. Try it. Have you seen this new Dodge Colt? It's a little economy car. With reclining bucket seats. 
It's been held over, one of the great comedies of all time with one of the great casts of all time. Don't miss Light Up the Sky, held over through Saturday, February 6th at the Huntington Hartford Theater. KNBC, Los Angeles. Last August, over 2,000 players reported to professional football camps. The regular season began in early September. Over 200 games have been played. And now, we're down to the final game, with only 80 players left and two teams. It was probably the most exciting season in the history of professional football, with a new alignment and a new divisional setup. And with just two weeks to go in the regular season, fans in 16 cities had their fingers crossed with hopes that their team could still make the playoffs. And now, this is Kurt Gowdy, on behalf of NBC Sports, saying that we're delighted you can be with us today, not just for a championship game, but for a unique event that has become a happening on the American scene. NBC Sports, a service of NBC News presents for the championship of professional football, Super Bowl V. The American Conference champions, the Baltimore Colts, versus the National Conference champions, the Dallas Cowboys. From the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida, and brought to you by Chrysler Corporation, extra care in engineering, your host today, your local Dodge dealer, and by Goodyear, the only makers of long-wearing polyglass tires. Miami, bright sunshine, the Orange Bowl Stadium. A record crowd for the Super Bowl today, 80,000. And of course, the artificial turf, a lightning fast field. Hi everybody, I'm Kurt Gowdy, and I'll call the play-by-play -play this afternoon. Kyle Roth, one of the best players who ever performed in the National Football League, will be analyzing this game, and down on the field, roaming the sidelines for pertinent information, will be Bill Ennis. Well, the Cowboys and the Colts have left the field. Right now, in their locker rooms, each player alone with his thoughts, what he has to do today. A final word from the coaching staffs, and then, the team prayer. Meanwhile, at the bottom of the Orange Bowl, there's pomp, there's pageantry, and there's music. confrontation today to determine the champion of the 1970 season. It is only fitting that we take just a moment to recognize those teams who have contributed to this great finale. 
in the National Conference, the Atlanta Falcons, the Los Angeles Rams, the New Orleans Saints, the San Francisco 49ers, the Chicago Bears, the Detroit Lions, the Green Bay Packers, the Minnesota Vikings, the Dallas Cowboys, the New York Giants, the Philadelphia Eagles, the St. Louis Cardinals, and the Washington Redskins. In the American Conference, the Denver Broncos, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Oakland Raiders, the San Diego Chargers, the Cincinnati Bengals, the Cleveland Browns, the Houston Oilers, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Baltimore Colts, the Boston Patriots, the Buffalo Bills, the Miami Dolphins, and the New York Jets. And the New York Jets, and of course our teams which have reached that pinnacle of championship status, today's contestants, the Baltimore Colts. And here's the biggest Baltimore Colt of them all. And the Dallas Cowboys. Introducing Johnny Morty Unitas, Martin. number 19, and Craig Morton, 14. Wish they were that tall to look over that pass rush. The Baltimore Colts and the Dallas Cowboys are getting ready for the opening kickoff. We'll be back in a moment with more about Super Bowl V. Uh, Howard, about the air conditioning? Yeah, terrific, ain't it? I'm freezing. Great special on air temp air conditioning down at the Dodge Boys. My lips are turning blue. Specially equipped Dodge Polara got over 50% off the air conditioning sticker price. But, Howard, it's January. So, who's going to discount it in August? The factory air conditioning special on Polara and Monaco at the Dodge Boys right now. Wilkinson presents a commercial for Gillette's newest blade and Wilkinson's newest blade. This one has an edge strengthened with pure chromium. This one uses a platinum chromium alloy. Both will give you a very good shave. Now, we won't tell you that one is better. Try both. Platinum Plus and the blade by Wilkinson. We think you'll know which blade you prefer and which blade sponsored this commercial. And now for his pregame look, let's listen to Kyle Rowe. Thank you, Kurt. Well, I guess we've sort of run out of time to just sit back and think about the game any longer. Time to give an opinion. And whether they will win the ball game or not is another thing, but I certainly do think the Baltimore Colts have the edge in this one. Dallas's strength is running, but they can be stopped on the ground. St. Louis did it. The Giants did it. Baltimore's strength is passing, but they can also be stopped through the air. Minnesota did it. Boston did it. Buffalo did it. But when you get over their strengths, then what? When the Cowboys have been forced to pass, well, they've had trouble. However, when the Colts have been forced to run, they've done pretty well, particularly in the last few games. And one other big difference, Dallas quarterback Craig Morton will be throwing into the Baltimore zone defense, whereas the Colts' Johnny Unitas will be firing at the Dallas man-for-man -man coverage. And when Johnny Unitas is going against man-for-man -man coverage, I think it's just a matter of time before he beats you. So we see Baltimore with the edge. Right now, down on the field, and Bill Ennis. Thank you, Kyle. This is the first Super Bowl to be played on artificial surface. The shoes will be worn by many of the ball players. Most, in fact, on the Colts and the Cowboys will be this shoe here. The one with the mini cleats, the soft rubber uh, tips for great traction. Here's the old shoe, the grass cleat. It will not be used this afternoon by any of the players in the ball game. We have checked with both coaches. The starting lineups are pat as you heard them. 
Walt Garrison, the major concern for the Cowboys in their running attack, will be in the ball game to start. Kurt mentioned the wind. The wind it could be a factor, should be a factor in this ball game. It is swirling now in the Orange Bowl. It is coming in low and going out high from the east end. So therefore, Kurt, it will be in the face of the Cowboys to start the ball game. We'll be down here reporting on major injuries and any other developments during the ball game. And now let's go back up to Kurt. The band will be clearing the field. Baltimore Colts in white today, the Dallas Cowboys in blue. Now we're going to have the indication for the toss of the coin. Cornell Green, 34, Manders, 51, Jordan, 55, the captains for Dallas. And it's the uh, Baltimore Colts will have Unitas. He's going to be the offensive captain. Ray May, number 56. Fred Miller, the veteran, is the defensive captain. But Dallas won the toss. They've elected to receive. Baltimore will kick off from your right. Norm Schachter is the referee. Paul Trapinski, the umpire. Ed Marion, the headlinesman. Jack Petty, the line judge. Hugh Gamber, the back judge. And Fritz Graff is the field judge. who are missing or captured in Southeast Asia. I hope you caught that announcement. We're going to have a formation of Air Force fighter aircraft conducting... Ladies and gentlemen, would you please join in singing our national anthem. They're not here yet. And now our national anthem. <laughs> will peel off a reminder of our missing or men captured. There's the missing symbol of our prisoners of war in Vietnam as they roar by. One gun, three remaining. The national anthem was played by Tommy Lloyd with the South Dade High School Band. We're clearing the field now. Baltimore will kick off from your right. Dallas will be receiving. And they're going to put Calvin Hill. On the near side. And Mark Washington on the far side. Put their punters and quarterbacks to make sure that the wind was going in that direction on the field. There's the kick by O'Brien. Not too deep. That's Calvin Hill, and he's ridden down on the 24-yard line. And he's hit there by Jack Maitland, number 40. And so we'll watch Dallas now go to the attack. A team that has changed from a big play team to a ball control team. But will they be faking that run today and maybe showing some play action passes early? Greg Morton said if he could get to Reggie Rucker early and give him some confidence, he may try and do it. It's on the 24-yard line of Dallas, first down. Morton, the quarterback. 
Garrison and Thomas set behind him. They're in their ship. Hayes is in the slot. Rucker outside of him. And that's Garrison, the fullback. To his 26-yard line, he's hit by Fred Miller. And by Roy Hilton, number 85. Up front, Bubba Smith will be the left end. He's number 78 for Baltimore. Billy Ray Smith, the left tackle, 74. Fred Miller, 76, the right tackle. Roy Hilton, 85, the right end. Ray May, the left linebacker, 56. Mike Curtis, the middleman, 32. Hendricks, 83, the right linebacker. Second down, eight. Ditka's in at tight end. The tight end's carry the messenger. Morton throws and hits at the 32-yard line. Dwayne Thomas, who comes out of the backfield. So Morton may be throwing to his backs in those short creases. And they have a third down now and two to go. And we see Craig Martin, uh, obviously, going at the weak side of the Baltimore defensive line, or weaker side, I should say, Roy Hilton, Fred Miller, as away from Bubba Smith. Also, we see Martin going to the air early, trying to establish his passing game, as we will see Unitas trying to establish his running game. Hayes and Rucker are on the same side as flankers. Third and two. They fake. They're going deep to Hayes. Nearly intercepted the ball thrown short. Hayes had streaked beyond Jerry Logan, but Logan saw the short pass and came back to try and intercept. And that's a dangerous area right in between the deep zone. Rick Volk, Jerry Logan, as Kurt pointed out, both of them inside, outside on the deep zone. Had the ball been up a little further, Jerry Logan might have had himself an interception. This should be a real matchup today. Baltimore has great return men. Ron Gardine averaged 12 yards of punt return, second in the conference. Jim Duncan, number one in kickoff return. Dallas has an outstanding covering team on kicks and punts. Ron Whidbey, booting, a high one. Fair catch call by Gardine, the rookie, on his 26, and Baltimore will put the ball in play. Well, the defensive unit got a hand for Baltimore by their fans. This telecast presented by the authority of the National Football League, intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of the telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. Unitas at quarterback. Bulash and Nowatsky set behind him. Eddie Hinton left and split out to the right is Roy Jefferson. And the tight end, Mackey's moved out in the slot. Bulash, big powerful rookie who really came along at the end of the season, is down by Leroy Jordan, number 55, the middle linebacker. A four-yard game by Norm Bulash, who is deceiving. He weighs 220, but he runs 100 in 9.6 or 9.7. He was on his college tra track team at TCU. Dog with injuries during college. And the Colts took a gamble on him as their number one pick last year. Second down, six. No score early. Bulash again. He's being him. And he's trapped for a loss and he's 25. And storming in there to get him, number 66, George Andre, the right end. Herb Adderley, the cornerback, turned the play in, number 26. Adderley with an extremely quick force on that play. Bulash had no place to go. You may see Unitas come out with some play pass action, not on a third and long, but in the next series of downs. Kyle, we noticed on that kickoff, we were talking about the wind. It was against the wind that hung up there in the air. If you get that ball high, it seems to be fighting the wind. Third and 11 now for Unitas when he's 25. They're slotted to the left. Unitas flips it and completes it to the 29, but they're way short. That was the tight end, John Mackey, who caught the ball. He was down by Leroy Jordan and Dallas Holt. Both of these teams are outstanding defensive clubs. David Lee now is back in a punt formation. Now, he usually kicks a very high spiral. He can hang them up five seconds, count him off. That's an ideal hanging time for a punt to get the coverage. And he kicks it low, and it was nearly blocked. Bob Hayes is upended on his 33, 32-yard line. Dallas really put the pressure on Dave Lee on that punt. So action will continue here at the Super Bowl. The score is Dallas nothing and Baltimore nothing.
This was Watts, 1965. A lot of us didn't know where our next meal was coming from. This is the Watts Manufacturing Company today. Minority Americans working together, making products, making profits, and making progress. From payroll deduction, we're buying stock in ourselves. Soon, we'll be one of America's largest minority enterprises. A team from a full-service bank figured it all out. First, they worked up the plan. Then, they got up the money. Now, they're helping to train us. Next, they'll pass out the stock. Over three million shares, not the easiest way for a bank to work, but the best way to help us grow. In actual cases like this across the country, full-service banks are helping. A full-service bank can help so many ways. This is our symbol. Helping is our business. In the second there for Baltimore, Charlie Stooks, the left corner, number 47, Jim Duncan, 35, the right corner, Logan and Volk are the safety men. First down, the pitch is to Thomas, and he maybe has a yard as the gang tackle him. The charge led by Roy Hilton, the right end. Coming up fast, Jim Duncan, 35, the cornerback. Three or four men on him. You'll be seeing the tight ends alternate for Dallas. Pettis Norman, 84, Mike Dicka, 89. The coach of Dallas, Tom Landry, calls all plays. And he took over that assignment. When Dallas had won five, lost four, and they haven't lost a game since. Pretty good signal caller. Second down, 10. Draw play. Wayne Thomas to his 40 and hit by Mike Curtis, who says I'm an animal on the field and a gentleman off. Here's Mike Curtis, number 32, the six-year veteran from Duke, and he is all over the field. You'll see him this afternoon. You'll also see Dallas trying to take advantage of his mobility. They'll give him the, what appears to be a passing situation, come with the draw, trying to get him dropping back into pass coverage. Now they have a third down and eight, and they have Dan Reeves in. He runs a better pass pattern than Thomas. Morton is hit by 85, Roy Hilton. Morton moved up in the pocket and got rid of the pass rush, couldn't find a receiver open, and then Hilton, as you saw, crashed into him from behind, the dropping. And there you saw the key to the Baltimore defense, their linebackers, excellent drops. They're so important in their whole defensive alignment. If they don't come up and help that line, the line's really not strong enough to hold it off by themselves. Very few lines are. And in the zone coverage, they have to make those perfect drops, which obviously they did then. Ron Whitby now. He's averaged 41 yards a kick this year. Ted Hendricks in there trying to block it. The kick is grabbed by Jerry Logan, gambling on his 25, and fights his way back to his 32-yard line, a seven-yard return. Claxton Welsh downfield to make the tackle. I believe that's a penalty against Dallas. We'll have to see how they rule it. Our first penalty... Now they put the ball on the Baltimore 47, Leroy Jordan, the defensive captain, talking to the official. It's a legal use of the hands against Dallas. Baltimore's ball, first down on their 47. The best field position either team's had, Craig Martin, getting some rosin on his hands. Johnny Unitas sets him down. Unitas looking, flips it. And it is intercepted by Chuck Howley. Chuck Howley coming to the 35 to the 40. Chuck Howley to the 50, and he's out of bounds. And grabbing him out was Johnny Unitas, who threw the ball. Howley, a very quick linebacker. All the Lallis linebackers are quick. Here's Howley making that drop, trying to cover Boulash, trying to get in the area where Boulash was, and he made the perfect drop. And then a great individual effort trying to haul that ball in. Holly, excellent range, great lateral movement, and a pretty fair runner when he gets the ball. There's Johnny Unitas bringing him down. That was a 19-yard return by Chuck Holly. Dallas now in Baltimore territory, the first time neither club has crossed the 50. No score, nine to go in the first period. That was Rucker in motion. Dwayne Thomas ganged up on the Baltimore 45. 
Jim Duncan barreling in from his right cornerback spot. Putting the tackle on him. Dwayne Thomas, who Tom Landry has called the greatest runner in the history of the Dallas Cowboys. Just a rookie. Came into his own in the sixth game against Kansas City when Calvin Hill became injured. And now he's carried that ball since. We have two West Texas State boys in the game today. Dwayne Thomas on the field for Dallas and Jerry Logan for the Baltimore Colts. The second down nine. Dallas in the Baltimore 45. Martin trying to dump it off. Incomplete pass. Looks like he's trying to set up a screen to one side. That was well covered by Ray May. Then he was looking for a safety valve man to get uh, the ball to. You know, with as many uh, intricate plays as Tom Landry devised, that could well have been a fake screen right, fake screen left, screen up the middle, which uh, is not inconceivable. You can certainly do it. And it looked like he had two wide men out to the right and left, and then trying to go up the middle to Walt Garrison. Just over eight minutes remaining in the first period, no score, third and nine. For the Dallas Cowboys and the Baltimore Colt 45 yard line. Greg Morton, a six year pro veteran, University of California. He's had passing problems in the playoff game. Sets up and fires that ball, and he just missed Bob Hayes. Hayes had a chance at it. There's a flag down. They dropped the flag on the play. And we might have pass ho uh, protection holding here against the Dallas Cowboys. Morton had a dislocated finger at the start of uh, last season, and he had a shoulder operation. He had to take 12 inches of ligaments out of a, a foot and put them in his shoulder. He's just been nagged with injuries the last two years. He's had a bad elbow the last month. Here's a penalty against the Dallas Cowboys. Back to their 31. It's holding on pass protection. Let's go down to Bill Ennis. Kurt on the last series of downs when the Cowboys had the ball and Craig Morton was dumped, he broke the skin on his forefinger of his passing hand, and it was hurting him when he came to the side. He was shaking it. He had some medication put on it, and on these last two, you can tell it might be bothering him some. Let's go back up to you. Dallas ball in their 31-yard line, third and 33. And now Ray May, uh, Bob Grant's gone in, a fourth linebacker, a three-man rush. Coming through is Walt Garrison. He's hit by Mike Curtis, the middle linebacker of the Baltimore Colts on the 41-yard line of Dallas. Blaine Nye, the right guard for Dallas, and Danny Reeves in the backfield. Great blocking on the draw. In punt formation again is Rodden Whitby. This will be his third punt. Ron Gardine is deep for the Baltimore Colts. Beautiful kick. Gardine feels it, fumbles, and a recovery inside the 10. Dallas ball. Gardine couldn't handle a punt. And there's a look at how it happened. Ron Gardine. Gardine trying to get going to his left, but the ball fading a little way to his right could perhaps be attributed to this win. But another key play on a kicking play. And a big break for the Dallas Cowboys. Both Cliff Harris and D.D. Lewis are there. More pro games are turned around on kicks in the kicking game than any other factor. First and goal to go now for Dallas on the Baltimore nine-yard line. Morton leading it off to Thomas. Thomas power running it, maybe reaching the five or just short of it. Charlie Stoops, the left cornerback. Roy Hilton again. Jim Duncan all in on a play. Second down, five and a half to go for a Dallas touchdown. No score, six and a half minutes to play in the first period. No wonder the coaches work and work and work in their kicking game. The receiving and the coverage. Second down, five and a half. Thomas again, stone wall nowhere. Mike but Curtis looked like he really moved in on it. He was a great charge, Kyle, as Curtis blasted through and hit Dwayne Thomas before he could get his momentum going. 
Now it's third and seven to go. I give my credits on this one. Fighting off that block on Dave Manders and just really overpowering Manders to get into the runner. Thomas. Dan Reeves, number 30, has checked in. Dwayne Thomas comes out. They use Reeves on third down passing situations. He can catch the ball. Third now and seven for a Dallas touchdown. Martin looking. And overthrows Reggie Rucker. And the field goal team is coming on. Rucker was covered there by Charlie Stoops. Fourth and seven. Mike Clark is on. He hit 18 out of 27 this year. Reeves will hold for him at the 13 yard line. Slight angle from the far side. Kick is good. The Dallas is first on the scoreboard. Action will continue here at the Super Bowl. The score, the Dallas Cowboys three, the Baltimore Colts nothing. Men, when you take it off with Noxema medicated shave, you know how close you can get? Hmm? <laughs> That's Andy Granatelli, automotive expert and president of STP. You might not expect a guy like Granatelli to worry like everybody else about cold weather starts. But while he's inside burning the midnight oil, out here it's freezing. So Andy uses STP oil treatment, not because he makes it, but because it works like antifreeze for your oil. Helps any engine start easier all winter long. Have your service station add STP to your oil and get the edge on winter. The man with the uh, jacket and uh, black shirt is Gino Marchetti, considered by most experts the greatest defensive end who ever played football. And he's still a Colt fan, and he helps the Colts with some coaching during the years. Here's the kickoff, a short one. Running up on it is Jim Duncan, a great kickoff returner to the 30. Duncan nearly breaks it, brings it out to the 36. He's averaged 35 yards a kick return. And he usually gives Baltimore good field position after a kickoff. Claxton Welch brought him down. Baltimore did not have a turnover against Oakland to win the American Football Conference Championship. They've already had two turnovers in this first period. United's being intercepted once and then fumbling a punt away to Dallas. Baltimore's ball, first down in their 36. United's to Boulash. Bulash is hauled down on his 36-yard line by Bob Lilly, the sheriff. One of the greatest defensive tackles of all time. Ten years he's played with the Cowboys, a former All-American at TCU. Very agile and strong. And you'll see Baltimore putting uh, two men on him. If they, they probably are starting their game plan to put two men on him. And some clubs even have to finally resort to putting three men to stop Lilly. Great, as you just saw, tremendous lateral reaction. Eddie Hinton flanks left, Roy Jefferson right. Second down, 10 for the Colts. Trying to establish that running game. Coming through is Nowatsky, who on the Tuesday before this regular season started was unemployed. He was cut loose by the Detroit Lions, picked up by the Colts as linebacking insurance. Injuries to Tom Matty, Jerry Hill. They made him into a running back, and he has come through, and he's been a good blocker. George Andre, the right end, made the tackle on him. A gain of seven. Third down, three for Baltimore. Four minutes to go in the first period. Dallas is leading three to nothing. Dallas putting those outside linebackers up. Bulash, he stopped at the 44 of Baltimore. Dave Edwards angling in from the left lineback position, number 52. Number 75 is the left tackle who got underneath the play, Jethro Pugh. Well, the amazing Dallas defense that has allowed only one touchdown the last 25 quarters so far has throttled the Colts. 
and they throttle their ground game, which is hurting Baltimore. On the other hand, uh, Martin has been successful with his short passes, certainly not his long passes. All right, in pump formation is David Lee. Who averaged 45 yards a kick this year. He's kicking to either Hayes or Renfro. That's the type of high kick that this boy boots. And get down there, someone. If they can, they down it. And they, they downed it and carried it in. Well, they had him on the ropes if uh, they could have kept the ball in there. Right. Just too many fingers in the pot, I guess. Too many cooks say. in the kitchen that time. Their momentum carried the ball across the goal line. You'll see him try and slap it back or slap it dead before it can cross that goal line. They would have had Dallas on the one-yard line. But two or three men scrambling, and their momentum carried the ball in. Well, we have a timeout now. Action will continue here at the Super Bowl. The score, the Dallas Cowboys three, the Baltimore Colts nothing. The Goodyear Custom White Tread Polyglass Tire. Laramie, you've got a lot of driving ahead of you, mister. Polyglass is mileage. Sorry, mister. Polyglass is traction. Oh, when are they going to fix these roads? Polyglass is strength. This is the Goodyear Custom Wide Tread Polyglass Tire. Inside, two fiberglass belts, plus today's most preferred tire body cord, polyester, pioneered by Goodyear. Traction. Strength. Long mileage, too. Polyglass is value. And remember, if it doesn't say Goodyear, it can't be polyglass. Tom Landry, with his back to you, has been a coach of the Cowboys since their inception in 1960. He watches his team as Ditka will bring a play in on the next uh, down. In motion goes Reggie Rucker, Walt Garrison, 25. He's my man. I was reared two miles from the rodeo grounds in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and this fellow is a rodeo hand. He was a star in high school on a rodeo team. He's a bronc buster, Brahma bull rider, bulldogger. And I'll tell you, Kyle, I grew up sort of around the rodeo days, and uh, you've got to be a tough performer. Well, he is a tough one. He's carrying an assortment of injuries into this ball game. A very bad ankle, which has just uh, apparently gotten well enough for him to run, and also a chip bone in his shoulder. Second down, five. The Cowboys in their 25. They're leading 3 nothing. In motion is Dwayne Thomas. Here's a draw to Garrison. Garrison has a first down to his 31-yard line. He's hit by Billy Ray Smith, who's going to call it quits after today. He'll retire. Tom Landry sending in Pettis Norman now with a play. You'll see Norman 84 replace Ditka 89, then Ditka come back in. The tight ends bring the plays in. Paul Brown used to use the guards as his messenger boys. Landry uses his tight ends. Dallas on their own, 30. That's the first first down. Here's Dwayne Thomas. And he's out of bounds on the 33-yard line of the Cowboys. Ted Hendricks and Ray May, the two linebackers, took him out. Ralph Neely, this is a great offensive line the Cowboys have, maybe the best in the business. Neely, 73 at left tackle. Nyland, 76 at left guard. Dave Manders, 51 at center. Blaine Nye, 61 at right guard. Rayfield Wright, number 70 at right tackle. The interior linemen don't get the glare of publicity, but you can't win without them. They're the protectors for the passer, the men that help move the ball. Morton making a screen this way. to Reeves. Dan Reeves to the 35. Trying to pick up some blocking. And he's to the 47-yard line. A first down again for the Cowboys. Charlie Stoops brought him down. Dan Reeves, who wanted to try something new this year, become a coach. He's a player coach. Now watch Martin go back. Fake to his right. That's the fake screen right, screen left call. And here it comes out. Excellent protection. Ralph Neely, 73 out. Cutting back across field now, picking up some blockers. And then the rest of it pretty much on his own. 
This, of course, is fake screen one way, screen the other way. Gets those linebackers really moving when that quarterback goes back, looks off to his right like he's throwing that screen. They'll take off over there as though they have read the screen, and they drop it off to the opposite side. First down, Morton faking again. He's throwing deep to Hayes, and he's got him! Bob Hayes catches the ball. He's down at the 13. There's a flag down the back of the line of scrimmage, and a fight, Bob Hayes and Jerry Logan going at it. There was a flag drop in back of the line of scrimmage. Here's the catch by Hayes. And there you'll see uh, Stoops just lost sight of the ball. His back's to it. Had he turned around, the ball should never have been completed. But Stoops not using his body. Just trying to keep his eye on that runner. And there's the penalty. A call roughing a passer against Miller of Baltimore. After that ball is released, the referee is dedicated to protecting a passer. He's a sitting duck. Miller roughed him, so they tacked the penalty on after the completion, and Dallas now has a first and goal to go on the Baltimore six. The two tight ends are in now, Norman and Ditka, to get some blocking power. Thomas and Garrison are messed up. Now they go into a split-back formation. They fake, and Morton... Throws the ball, and they had it wide open. Wide open was Dwayne Thomas over there with Neely to convoy him into the end zone. Dallas is coming out throwing today, and they're confusing Baltimore right now. They've really got them confused on defense. And as you said, uh, Kurt, no one anywhere near Ralph Neely and Dwayne Thomas. They were over near where the official is up at the top of your screen, all alone about 10 yards away from any Baltimore cold defender. Bob Hayes comes out, going in now is Calvin Hill. Calvin Hill, rookie of the year last year, beaten out by Dwayne Thomas this year. Two tremendous young running backs for the future. Now they're in the old high-button shoes, straight T formation. There's Dwayne Thomas sliding off and hit on a great play by Jim Duncan, who did his job as a cornerback out there naked against him and turned him in, Jim Duncan, who's made two good tackles coming up from the cornerback position. It is now on the eight-yard line, third and eight for Dallas on the Baltimore eight for a touchdown. Calvin Hill comes out, and Bob Hayes replaces him. It's been all Dallas in his first period. Dwayne Thomas uh, limping off the field, favoring his right ankle, cheers, or his right knee. There's the gun, and that's the end of the first quarter in the 1971 Super Bowl game with a score. The Dallas Cowboys three, the Baltimore Colts nothing. Hey, hey, baby. Hey, look at what I got. The brand new Dart Swinger. Ain't she a beauty? I done heard about it. See, I got this special deal down to Dodge Boys. I got the... Hubert, turn in your badge. Say what? One thing I can't stand is a law officer accepted preferential treatment. You mean a bribe? I mean a special deal. White side walls, wheel covers, vinyl roof, and all that stuff. But I paid for all that. But look at the sticker. And the automatic transmission? What about the automatic transmission? What did it cost you? Nothing. Give me the badge, Buford. That's part of the Swinger Automatic Special, J.W. Special equipped Dodge Dart comes with the automatic transmission at no extra charge. Go ask them. Ask them your own self. You're entitled to one phone call. Well, now the new Swinger Automatic Special. So great last year, we brought it back for seconds. See it at your Dodge dealer today. Much obliged, Dodge boys. Today's game is being played for the Vince Lombardi Trophy. Vince coached the very first Super Bowl winner. Those who knew him knew he hated to lose, but he couldn't beat cancer. Brian Piccolo, the gutsy Chicago Bear running back, gave everything he had, but cancer cut him down too. You know, scientists tell us that through research, we're close to beating this dread disease. The National Football League asks you for your help in making that victory come sooner. Send your contributions, whatever you can afford, to Super Bowl Cancer Fund, Box 800, Grand Central Station, New York, New York, 117. We owe it to Vince and Brian. This is Kurt Gowdy, Kyle Roth, Bill Ennis, second period, Dallas, was a little confused, you saw, in their last formation. Rucker started off the field, went back. That might have 
bombed out that wide uh, open play they had. Here's Morton. He's hit. He throws the ball, but a flag is down. In there on him is Billy Ray Smith, number 74. I think we'll get a grounding penalty. You rarely see it called, but I think that's what it'll be. If this is called, this is the first one we've seen this year, Kyle. And the official who called it was standing right behind Martin. Looks like Martin was trying to hit one of his linemen and then suddenly <laughs> veered away and threw it into the ground. 15 yard penalty moves the ball back to the 23 yard line of Baltimore. That's intentionally grounding. Loss of a down, so the field goal team is on. And now Mike Clark, who kicked the 13 yard field goal with uh, 5.32 to go in the first period, will try again. Dan Reeves will spot the ball for him on the Baltimore 30. Flag is down. The kick is good, but a flag has been dropped. Now let's see what it's about. It's offside against Baltimore, being declined by Dallas, and they grab a 6-0 lead. Let's quickly go down to Bill Ennis. Kurt, on a series of plays a moment ago, Dwayne Thomas slightly twisted his right knee, but he has been running here at the bench. We check with the trainer. He should be all right and should be back in action shortly. Back up to you. Thanks for that report, Bill. And just checking my running play-by-play uh, -play sheet, Baltimore's deepest penetration has been to its own 44-yard line. Baltimore has not crossed the 50-yard line yet. There's Thomas. Jim Duncan and Ron Gardeen will receive this kick, one of them from Mike Clark. He booms it. It is coming to Duncan, a real threat. He's to the 10, 15, to the 20, and to the 25. As we said, I think one of the interesting matchups today is Gardeen on punts, Duncan on kickoffs against a superb Dallas team covering kicks. First down. Baltimore on their 24. And now let's see if 37-year-old John Unitas can dig out and try and crack this Dallas defense as he sets him down. So far, he's not been able to move him. And he throws under the gun again. Boy, they're putting the heat on him. D.D. Lewis was in there. He was trying to hit Eddie Hinton. Unitas throwing under pressure, and you saw Hinton double team. Dallas has had three first downs, Baltimore none. There have been two turnovers, both by Baltimore. Dallas has not made a mistake so far. Second and ten for Baltimore. And on field level, the wind is now into Unitas's face. He may have a little difficulty if uh, he tries to throw one of those delicately uh, timed passes. He may have to fire every short pass he has. Second and ten, fakes the boulash. And that's incomplete to Jefferson. You know, Kyle, two years ago, we covered the Colts and the Jets. And so far, everything's sort of going wrong for Baltimore, almost like it was two years ago against New York. It really is. And uh, however, I think uh, they're fortunate just to be trailing by six points. They've had an interception, a fumble. Then Hayes caught the long pass with the roughing the quarterback penalty put them down to the six and they're just out of this with just six points I think they're fortunate at, at this point in the ballgame Baltimore's gained only four yards passing Unitas is one out of four on third and ten he's throwing and it's over the head of Hinton that is going to be an incomplete pass if it was not touched by Dallas if Dallas Dallas may have ticked that ball. You cannot have a completion from one offensive man to another offensive man. And that's what the Cowboys are arguing. We'll see if we can see it. And here comes the ball. We'll see how many touch it. No, he didn't quite. Yes, it looked like somebody tipped it. It looked like it might have been Eddie Hinton. And there's Mackey, 88. Now we'll try another look. Here goes Mackey. We'll see if he touched it. 
Oh, that was Mackey. We were looking for Hinton. Apparently he's not. The Baltimore Colts have their touchdown. Dallas still complaining and uh, apparently with some uh, some reason. I think Cornell Green might have ticked it, Sandy official. We're going to explain that to you again. After we get rid of this extra point, maybe a commercial. Moral holding, a kick by O'Brien, is blocked. And it's a tie game. Baltimore got a big break coming through with Mark Washington to block the extra point. You cannot have a pass completion if the ball deflects from one offensive receiver to another. However, if it was touched in between by the defense, then it can be a completion. So evidently, the uh, official saw that a Dallas player, I think it was Cornell Green, might have kicked that ball into the hands of John Mackey, so it went as a 76-yard touchdown play. A lucky one for the Baltimore Colts. Action will continue here at the Super Bowl. The score is now tied, Dallas 6 and Baltimore 6. Tungsten steel, tough, hard. No metal holds a sharper edge. Tungsten steel. That's why Persona went to Sweden and worked with precision steel experts to develop a razor blade made of tungsten steel. No metal holds a sharper edge. Introducing the totally new Tungsten Tough Persona 74. The Persona 74. This is the sharpest, longest lasting razor blade made. The tungsten blade means a smoother shade. Persona 74. Not just a coating, but a totally new blade steel. New Persona 74. Tungsten tough to smooth out your shave. The Persona 74. Jim O'Brien now will kick off for Baltimore with Mark Washington back deep and Calvin Hill. The kick is coming. Now they let it go, and Hill is, what's he going to do? He downs it. Here's this play again, Kyle. And we'll see. The ball was intended for Eddie Hinton or Mackey. We'll look and see if Cornell Green did touch it. There it's going over Hinton's head. Now we'll see if Cornell Green tips it right here. Coming down right there. See if he touches it. And it could have been uh, touched or it could not have been touched. Really, it's hard to determine. But at any rate, John Mackey hauled it in. It's a touchdown, 76 yards. It's a tie game. Dallas down row 20. Greg Morton beating Thomas, and he is scissored by Ray uh, by number uh, 56, Ray May, who came in from his left lineback position to make the hit on him. You know, it's been an odd thing. In that pregame show, Joe Namath predicted that Dallas would not be able to run as well against Baltimore as they thought. But Dallas has been throwing a lot more than everybody thought they would. They're supposed to come out and play a strict ball control game, but they haven't. They're on their 18-yard line, second and 12. Tie game, 6-6. Six to six. Look out, get back there, Bubba Smith. Morton now under the gun from Bubba Smith, and it's incomplete. And Morton was dumped by Big Bubba Smith. 295 pounds of it. Tom Landry sending in a new play. And also with a tight end Norman going in, he's sending in Dan Reeves, his back. It is now third down and 12. Morton now is three out of eight. Unitas is two out of five. Dallas has controlled the ball in this game. They've controlled everything but one play. On a deflection from one man to another with a Dallas man touching it in between, saying the official. And Dallas is hopping mad. He dumps it off. It's incomplete to Garrison, the fullback, number 32. And now a punt formation coming up. And after that touchdown strike by Baltimore and holding Dallas, let's see if Baltimore gets the momentum going. Ron Whitby will punt. Ron Gardine, the rookie, from Arizona will be back. Game tied six to six. Greg Morton coming to the bench. Mm -hmm. 
He booms it. A low in the Gardein on his 38. Look at that coverage by Mark Washington. He was really down there, pouncing on it. Mark Washington covering. Timeout. Action will continue here at the Super Bowl. The score is tied. Dallas 6, Baltimore 6. I'm John Cameron Swayze, reminding you that H&R Block will prepare, double check, and guarantee your tax return, starting as low as $5, and make sure you receive every legitimate deduction. This year, more than 8 million families will trust H&R Block. You should be one of them. Just look for this sign. There's no finer tax service in America. Find three convenient H&R Block offices in Buena Park, Canoga Park, and Anaheim. H&R Block, a good place to place your confidence. The Oppenheimer Fund is a mutual investment fund whose management will take what it considers prudent risks in an effort to make your money grow. Ask your securities dealer for a free prospectus on the Oppenheimer Fund. You push a hack, you hear everything. So you learn to make up your own mind about things, like with this Dr. Pepper. Look, how do you know you won't like it if you don't try it? The Dallas bench, already a controversial play in the first half. Dallas leading six to nothing, widely outplaying Baltimore when Baltimore struck. United's trying to hit Eddie Hitton, bounced off his hands into the hands of Mackey for a touchdown and touched in between by a Dallas defender. Otherwise, it would have been an incomplete pass. And there's the charge on the right end of Dallas number 66, but he may have been drawn off on some illegal movement, illegal procedure. Vogel, number 72, the interior lineman move. Let's go down to Bill Ennis. Kurt, Kurt during the timeout, we called Norm Schachter, the referee, over. He explained what happened. He checked with the back judge. The back judge told him a blue jersey touched the football between the two receivers. He could not give a number. The back judge could not either. He just said it was a blue jersey. And there was no question in his mind. Let's go back to you. All right, we Cornell Green attested, as you saw in the replay. Boulash for the 35. And now the polls call him Big Boo. That's who. Picks up two yards. It'll be second down, 13 for Baltimore. They're having trouble running against this very quick Dallas defense. Earl Morrill on the sideline. He's the alternate quarterback. He was here two years ago. Unitas was on the sideline that day. Unitas coming in late in the game. Second down and 13 to go. Baltimore in the 35. We're tied up six all. And hit again is Blue Lash and he's 37. That was Cornell Green, the strong safety, who came up along with 63, Larry Cole, the left end, and Jeff Pugh, 75, the left tackle. Unitas is trying to get that running game going so they can open up that passing attack, but he can't do it. Dallas has just been too quick. I think the way Cornell Green has been playing on second down situations up tight, watching that back. We might look for Johnny the next time he has a second down situation to go deep. Third and 11. Unitas, strong rush on him. Sideline pass over the head of Eddie Hinton, 33, who's being covered by Mel Renfro. One of the great defensive backs in pro football. And you saw Cole in there. They're getting a, Unitas is getting a hard rush today. He has not had much time every time he's thrown. Fourth and 11 and a punt formation with David Lee now to kick. Bob Hayes, Mel Renfro back as the two safety men. 11.48 to go in the first half. The game is tied 6-6. Six to six. low kick could get a return on this with Hayes on his 26 to the 30 and skips out of bounds on his 33 yard line this fifth Super Bowl game being carried on 510 television stations 720 radio outlets live television coverage via satellite to Hawaii Puerto Rico Mexico the Virgin Islands Costa Rica and Canada and the first telecast of a Super Bowl game to be seen via satellite on NBC's affiliate KENI Television in Anchorage, Alaska. And in Great Britain, 
They're going to watch a delayed report of this game. Maybe a little confused over there today in Great Britain. First down on the 33. Here's the pitch to Thomas. Thomas battles his way to his 35. And he's hit by Rick Volk, the safety man. We're going to pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Inquiry with Sheriff Peter Pitches at 5 on KNBC Los Angeles. And we said that Baltimore is not running against Dallas, and neither is Dallas running against Baltimore. They've only had uh, 30 yards rushing. The Colts have had only 12 rushing. Fake draw. The pass incomplete to Bob Hayes. Hit the turf. Morton on a play action, trying to make Baltimore think, run, and then pass. Fake the garrison on the draw, and the pass was in front of Bob Hayes, who had curled into that zone open. And you can just see the pressure in a game like this. Both quarterbacks, Martin and Unitas, offline on a number of their passes, throwing it down into the ground, trying to make sure they guide that thing so well. They're holding onto the ball just a little too long, and it's taking it right down into this artificial turf. Morton is three out of 10. And on third down, it's off to Rees. Rees nearly dropped the ball, and he's stopped on his 34-yard line by Ray May and Mike Curtis, the two linebackers in there on him. So now it'll be fourth and nine, and Ron Woodby comes in. This is turning into a punting duel here in the first half with two very tough defenses. That's why they're both in the Super Bowl, because they have great defenses. To beat this Baltimore defense, you've got to beat their linebackers. Uh, again, they are the key to it. Ron Gardine, the safety man. Flag goes down. A high kick. Gardine is calling for a fair catch on his 22-yard line. But a flag has been dropped. Offside against Dallas. Let's see what Baltimore wants to do. Wouldn't be surprised to see them have him kick it over. That's, uh, well, we'll see. They may take. That was a 44-yard kick from scrimmage with no return, a very effective punt. 10 minutes, 17 seconds remaining in the first half. The game is tied 6-6. Six to six. They're going to bring it back. A key point in this decision is that it is fourth down and about seven to go, and with the penalty, of course, it'll bring it out to about 12 13 yards to go. They looked over to McCaffrey, the Baltimore coach. He gave him the decision, except the penalty. Now it's back on the 30 yard line. Dallas has run off twice as many plays as Baltimore. Once again, Ron Whitby, who in his senior year at Tennessee led the nation's college uh, kickers in punting. And he boots this one away. And Another beauty, fair catch called by Gardine. He already called for the catch on his 21-yard line. So by accepting the penalty, Baltimore lost the yard. Excellent kicking by Ron Whitby. Timeout. And action will continue here at the Super Bowl. The score is Dallas 6 and Baltimore 6. <laughs> Certain things make you uncontrollably happy. Others leave you quietly pleased. But some provide a richer pleasure, like the satisfaction you get by giving your family basic financial security. Your New York life insurance agent knows a lot about this kind of happiness. Helping people find it is his full-time career. How can life insurance make your family's future happier? Your New York life agent has the answer. Here it is. Solid luxury. New Charger SE, completely restyled uh, this year. Sir, I'd, I'd love a Charger, but... Uh... Oh, a family man, huh? Yeah. I'll tell you what. Looking for uh, economy, good mileage. Yeah. Lots of room, of course. Right on. What do you got? How about this? A Charger? You're putting me on. New Dodge Charger. If your family's too young for square wheels, you can't afford not to be Dodge material. To show you how tenacious these two teams have been on defense, we've had only four first downs in the first half, three by Dallas, one by Baltimore, and that was on that 76-yard deflected pass. 12 yards rushing for Baltimore. 
30 yards rushing for Dallas. They've stopped each other on the ground. In the air, 79 yards for Baltimore, but 76 of them on one play. 59 yards for Dallas in the air. First down, Unitas. Trying to dump it off, incomplete. And he was trying to... Well, he had some defenders there. He really had no receiver. He had no receiver there, but there were defensive men in the area, so it's not intentionally grounded. Actually, Johnny's unhappy. I can't think, uh, the help to think that he threw the ball away. He saw Norm Bulis a little bit coming, trying to come out in that area, but he also saw one of the Cowboy defenders in, coming in on Bulis, so I think he sort of dumped that away. United's two out of seven. Bulash trying to swing around. Charlie Waters, a safety man, a rookie, 41. What a play he made. He did not make a tackle in college until he played in the college all-star game. He's from Clemson. They put him in a defense. That's the first tackle he ever made. He was an offensive man in high school and college. He's turned into quite a rookie safety man, a free safety. On the 21-yard line of Baltimore, they have a third down and nine. The game is tied six all. Two field goals by Dallas, a 76-yard pass play by Baltimore. Baltimore's extra point was blocked. Nine and a half minutes to go in the first half. Fake draw play. There's a rush again on United. He'll have to run it. He's to the 25. He fumbles. It's recovered by Jethro Pugh. Jethro Pugh on the ball, number 75. Chuck Howley hit United and jarred the ball loose. The third turnover by Baltimore. One interception and two fumbles. And there's Unitas, and he was moving around and in pretty good shape. And number 66 coming in there, George Andre, put the immediate pressure on him. There's Howley hitting him, and as well as Jordan. I would take another look at this play with Johnny all alone. And here comes the pressure up the middle. Unitas trying to break away. There's the hit. Jordan and Howley both hitting him. First down, Dallas in the Baltimore 29. Rucker in motion. Thomas on the power sweep. And he's hit. He was trying to follow Blaine Nye, the right guard, and Bubba Smith made the stop. It's on the 24-yard line of Baltimore. The play didn't look like much, but it picked up five yards. There goes Reeves in the backfield and Ditka to bring a play in at tight end. One reason it went, they haven't really been able to get outside of Baltimore up until now. That time, however, Walt Garrison was able to hook Ted Hendricks, the outside linebacker, in. Able to the uh, runner to get outside, Thomas. That's Pettis Norman who seems to be shaken up. Reeves down in the backfield. Hayes is spread to the left. Second down five for Dallas. They're on the Baltimore 24. They're in a double wing setup. Rucker in motion. Morton. Plenty of time. The pass complete to Reeves. Reeves is out of bounds inside the 10. He's out on the six and a half yard line. They put him in. He's the best pass receiver of the Dallas backs. And you can see why they put him in there. And that's what Dallas is doing, beating the linebackers. Reeves going out on Ray May. They caught Baltimore in a blitz that time. Eight minutes to go in a half. The game tied six all. Rucker is spread to the right. First and goal to go for Dallas. Outside of one play, they have been the superior offensive team today. A fake. The pass to Thomas on the screen. They wipe him out, and Thomas is in for the touchdown. Wayne Thomas, and he got a great block by the tight end, Pettis Norman. And some excellent faking in the backfield by Martin. And there it is, number 33, Dwayne Thomas. There's 20, Jerry Logan coming up. Stepped inside of Logan, just over the goal line. Dwayne Thomas, who used to be a blocking back. Can you imagine him a blocking back? He was a great one for Mercury Morris at West Texas State. And Mercury said today, how could they ever use him as a blocker? I should have been blocking for him. The kick by Clark. Good. So the Cowboys have made their own luck today. They had one bad break if they want to be a Cowboy fan, a deflected pass. 
And look at the touchdown play. Morton, good faking, as we mentioned, in the backfield. Dropping it out to Dwayne Thomas. Thomas stepping inside of Jerry Logan, number 20. And just falling over the goal line as Billy Ray Smith came in to make the tackle. Kyle Baltimore has had three turnovers. They fumbled the ball away twice. Unitas has fumbled once. Gartine fumbled a punt, and they've had a pass interception. And Dallas has not had a turnover. And that's the story so far. Duncan takes it on the eight. Comes to the 20. He's up to the 30. This is a typical Duncan return as he runs it back to his 38-yard line. And the tackle is made there by Richmond Flowers, a former high hurdler at the University of Tennessee. Remember the Bing Crosby Pro-Am Golf later today on NBC, live from Pebble Beach. First down, the Baltimore Colts trailing 13 to 6 on their own 38-yard line. Now Watsky and Bulash set behind United. Jefferson right, hit and left. The pass is... There's going to be a flag. That's an interception, but I think you're going to have an interference call here. The pass was intended for Jefferson, and we have pass interference on Herb Adderley. Dallas is conscious to the outside on defense, and Baltimore is trying to curl their men to the inside. That's pass interference. Here's a look at Roy Jefferson running this pattern. He'll be picked up by number 26, Herb Adderley, as he does that little turn in. Adderley coming in. And the ball, before it got there, that was the contact the official was pointing out. Baltimore now to Dallas 49. Unitas quickly to Jefferson, complete out of bounds on the 41 of Dallas. Adderley drove him out. This is third Super Bowl game for Adderley. Two with Green Bay. He was happy there, unhappy up there. And they traded him to Dallas. Adderley is the type of cornerback that if you're a receiver, you regret catching the ball. He really racks you up after you catch him. Come on, Come on, Second down, two to go. Baltimore on the Dallas 41. 13 to 6, Dallas leading. Just under seven minutes to play in the first half. Bulash. Bulash to the 37-yard line, hit by Chuck Howley, a 12-year vet from West Virginia. Number 54, and it's a first down for Baltimore. Now the clock shows six and a half minutes to go in the first half. Baltimore on the Dallas 37. Outside of that 176-yard pass play, that's the first time that Baltimore has put on a drive and crossed the 50-yard line. Now Johnny Yu seems to have them moving. Fakes to Bulash. He throws the ball deep to Hinton. It's intercepted. Mel Renfro intercepting. Unitas knocked down as he let it go. George Andre hit him. There's Mel Renfro who intercepted. He intercepted four during the year. Four turnovers now by Baltimore. Two interceptions, two fumbles. There it is again. And Unitas uh, looked like he got checking up a little bit on the play after he threw it. Down. I don't know whether at least he sort of hobbled off, looked like he was in a little bit of pain. Well, he's had a rush on him today. That was Andre. They've all rushed him. He has had very little time on any pass he's thrown today. Probably the most intense pressure he's had all year. Oakland did not pressure him. First down for Dallas on the 15, their own 15. And coming up to the 17 or 18 yard line is Dwayne Thomas. And he's hit there by Billy Ray Smith, 74, and Ray May, number 56. Getting back to this Dallas uh, rush on Unitas, actually, they, there, there have been a couple of red dogs, but not a consistent red dogging pattern. And this has been done pretty much by that front four. Andre, Lilly, Hugh, Cole. Tremendous pressure on Johnny. On that play, he had Eddie Hinton wide open, but he threw the ball too late. As he hit, by Andre let it go, and Renfro picked it off. It was too short. Thomas, or Garrison, let's see Thomas running that sweep. Wayne Thomas, Rick Volk, and number 32, Mike Curtis. And they'll spot the ball now on the 22-yard line of Dallas. They'll have a third down and three. 
Once again, we saw the reason Thomas has been having such a great season running in the latter part of the year. Walt Garrison, number 32, and we see Earl Marl warming up on the sideline. Apparently, Unitas was shaken up to the extent that uh, we may see Marl in the ball game. Third and three for the Cowboys. They're ahead 13 to six. Four and a half minutes to play in the first half. Baltimore nearly jumping offside. They may have Thomas running the ball. He's over his 25 to his 26. It's good for a first down, but a flag has been dropped. Frank Martin, the captain on offense. Here's a signal offside. You saw two Colts jump. Looked like the two interior tackles. Johnny Unitas, who has been under the real gun today with a tremendous Dallas pass rush. Evidently something under his right shoulder. It's an ice bag he has on to uh, prevent swelling. First down for Dallas. Morton is screened to Thomas. Thomas being pursued by Bubba Smith gets away from him. What a move that was. Looked like a ballet dancer on that one. What a move as he spun away from Bubba Smith, who appeared to have him hemmed in. It's Tom Landry sending a play in now. Watch this move. And a good fake to Garrison. Now just a little lob out to Thomas. And convoy there by Rayfield Wright, 70, Blaine Nye, 61. And a great spin by Thomas himself. That was a six-yard gain. Thomas now has 20 yards on the ground. Garrison has 21. The Colts have gained only 17 yards rushing. Play action pass. And they screen it to Rucker, the flanker. Flag goes down. Rucker is ridden to the turf by number 21, Rick Volk. But they dropped the flag. Looks like we have pushing, offensive pushing. That was Bob Hayes. I think he had offensive pushing. Bob Hayes was the man that committed a foul. And they're talking now to Fred Miller, the defensive captain, number 76. Hayes was trying to aid his runner and committed the foul. And they're hurting Baltimore, Kyle, with those wide screens. They're hooking Chet Hendricks on uh, some of these running plays. And then, of course, the wide screen this offensive line of Dallas able to get out away from that line and out in front of that uh, pass receiver on those little flat passes. Extremely mobile, extremely quick lineman. Ball is spotted on the Dallas 18-yard line. Offensive interference. That's seven penalties against the Cowboys, 83 yards already. Baltimore's had only uh, two penalties. On the 18-yard line, it'll be second down and 19. Dallas leading 13 to six. Three and a half minutes to play in the half. A release to Reeves. Reeves has come in to do a fine job of spot performing today. Is out on the 29-yard line of Dallas, driven out by the safety man, Jerry Logan. And Martin showing a great deal of uh, patience, great deal of discipline, not trying to fight that zone. Early in the ball game, he went up a couple of times. Dennis Norman brings the new play in. Third and eight for Dallas. Two field goals. Dwayne Thomas romps over for a touchdown with the extra point. Baltimore's had a 76-yard pass play. Deflection from Hinton to Cornell Green off Green's hands to Mackey. And they had their extra point block. On third and eight. Here's a big rush against Morton. And Roy Hilton's on him, 85. And number 76 is Fred Miller. But Hilton got to him first. That's three times Hilton has penetrated deep today for Baltimore. Let's quickly go down to Bill Ennis. Kurt, we have a report. We checked the Baltimore bench on Johnny Unitas. He was hit very hard with an interception a moment ago. He has an ice pack on his ribs. He is having a little trouble breathing. He says he's all right. Earl Morrow continues to warm up. Let's go back up to you. On the right side of Unitas, he has been hit in the ribs. He has sore ribs. 
He says he's all right. That is a typical statement that Unitas would say, but evidently he's not. Here is the kick now by Whitby. It's a wobbler. Gardine gambles on his 46. Nearly has his head torn off by number 43 of the Cowboys, and that is Cliff Harris, who nearly came in with a head and the helmet and everything. Earl Morrill now comes on the quarterback. Earl Morrill, who threw four touchdown passes against the Jets in the last season game for Baltimore, as Unitas is injured. And it's a first down for Baltimore on their own 48-yard line. Morrill has time, completes the pass to Eddie Hinton, and the ex-Oklahoma star has a first down on the Dallas 26. Eddie Hinton, second in the American Conference in pass receiving. And here's Earl Morrill, player of the year, 1968, firing to Eddie Hinton. Hinton across the middle, brought down by Mel Renfro. It's a big curl in pattern, down and across. 26 yard pass play, Morrill to Hinton. First down Baltimore in the Dallas 26. 13 to 6 Dallas. Oh, what a pass. Check block that was Hinton can't get it and it's broken up out there by Mel Renfro one of the best in football one on one used to be a safety man right cornerback Kyle used to be the weak position with the Cowboys and that's why they put Renfro there this year they've got a couple of good ones now Renfro Adderley and of course uh, young Charlie Waters at safety position surrounded by experience what a great way to break in a young player Surround him with uh, Cornell Green, nine years. Herb Adderley, ten years experience. Dallas usually plays the run on first down, and if they blitz, they blitzed only 15% this year. They'll do it on this down. Let's watch. Second and ten. And they raise up and hit Roy Jefferson to the 11. He's going. The whistle is not blowing, and he goes to the five, and a flag is down. And a foul call on Dallas. It's on Leroy Jordan. And here's the play. Morrow firing into Jefferson. And that looks like, well, we'll try and pick his number up in just a moment. Who got injured on the play. Here's Jefferson going down. Just a little curl in. And that's number 41 coming in. They knocked Waters Jefferson when he hit. Well, Jefferson's a big, strong flanker. And when he hit the safety man Waters, he injured him. And then at the five yard line, Leroy Jordan committed a foul. The penalty goes half the distance to the goal. And now it is first and goal to go on the two yard line. A timeout. Action will continue here at the Super Bowl. The score is the Dallas Cowboys 13 and Baltimore 6. For some reason, people think all airlines are the same. They're not. Several airlines bought 747s, but TWA built the first 747 terminal. TWA was the first airline to give you private customs and immigration facilities. Most other airlines still share. Only TWA gives you a choice of two movies on every movie flight. At busier airports, we moved our departures to 15 minutes before the hour. So thousands of our passengers beat the crowds every day. For years, the coach passenger has helped pay our bills. We're paying him back with a whole new coach service on TWA ambassador flights. Whether you're flying in the United States or around the world, it pays to spend your money carefully. All airlines are not the same. Roy Jefferson took that pass. His knee didn't touch the ground because Waters was underneath him. That's when Waters became injured, and that's why Jefferson could get up and keep running from the 11 down to the 5. And now Earl Morrill has moved this team in three plays from his own 48-yard line to the Dallas 2.5-yard line. A first down and goal to go. They have the two tight ends, Mackey and Mitchell, in the game. They have Bulash and Nowoski behind Morrill. And it's off to Bulash, and he stopped. Oh, that blue wall with Lily and Pugh in there underneath. Renfro coming in to help, number 20. And number 54, Chuck Howley. 
And as they untangle, it's still on the two yard line. Second down and two to go. We have a minute and 33 seconds to go in the first half. Baltimore has a chance to go in front here in the closing seconds of this half with a touchdown and a point. We'll see if Dallas can stop them. They've allowed only one touchdown in the last 25, 26 quarters. And Bulash trying to fight his way in. He can't do it. A big hit on him there by George Andre and Tom Stinchy. Now it is third down and still two to go. What do you call, Kyle? Well, when Earl Morrow goes into the knot, Unitas always likes that play action pass. It's a slant to the fullback or the halfback with them continuing on out into the flat. We'll see which play selects. Third down and two to go for a Baltimore touchdown. That could tie them with the Cowboys. Bulash stopped again. What a defense down there in that goal line. They haven't budged an inch. We're in the last 25 seconds now, the half. And Baltimore is calling for time with the clock showing 21 seconds to go in the half. Earl Morrow will go to the bench and talk to his coach. They had the ball in the two and a half yard line, three cracks it to the two, a fourth and two to go for a touchdown with only 21 seconds to go. Dallas leading 13 to 6. Now what do you do? You go over the try and get the sure three points, which should be. Don McCafferty, a rookie coach, 10 years, an assistant coach at Kent State, turned down an assistant coaching job with Baltimore one time. Two years later, Weeb Eubank gave him a second chance and he accepted it. 11 years as an assistant coach with the Colts, Shula left. And now Don McCafferty is the man. And right now, to his other 15-year veteran quarterback, Earl Morrow. They don't have the kicker in there. They're going for it. Fourth and two to go for a Baltimore touchdown. Dallas leading 13 to 6. Baltimore's driven from their 48 to the 2. Morrow has moved the team better than United did. Seem to get better protection. Unitas is injured with bad ribs. They're going to pass for it. They shoot it out, and it's incomplete. They're trying to hit Tom Mitchell, the tight end, and he stumbled going into the end zone. Mitchell was trying to slither through. He stumbled. He was delayed coming off the line, held up. And also on a fourth down pass into the end zone, it normally comes out to the 20 yard line. That's what it'll be. What a magnificent goal line defense by the Dallas Cowboys. Mitchell trying to fight his way through that uh, line on a fake running play, trying to fake the block and slip on through. But the linebackers just chucked him up in there. He couldn't get out. 16 seconds to go. Morton to Garrison to the 22. The tackle made by number 74, Billy Ray Smith and Mike Curtis. And the clock will move out now. This will wind up the first half. And we've had an excellent first half here. Baltimore turned the ball over four times, and they couldn't score on the two-yard line with four cracks. So Dallas... At the end of the first half of the 1971 Super Bowl game, the score, the Dallas Cowboys 13 and the Baltimore Colts 6. Lots of credit cards are good in your hometown. The American Express card is good worldwide. Express card, the new money worldwide. Well, yes, sir, I can get that number for you. But did you know you could dial the number yourself, sir? Yes, sir. You know, when I tell people they can dial long distance calls themselves, they probably think I'm trying to save myself work. But actually, I'm trying to save them money. On a three minute coast to coast call, you can save from 25 to 40 cents if you dial the call yourself. 
So whenever you make a long distance call, dial it yourself. On most out of state calls from your home or office, you'll save. We'll have halftime activities for the 1971 Super Bowl game after this pause for station identification. It's guys like Rowan and Martin that make the Lone Ranger wear a mask. When I put on a red pantsuit and my husband doesn't notice, that's bad. So I watch my calories. That's good. There's only two calories in a big bubbly eight ounce glass of Fresca. No sugar, no cyclamates. It's an honest to goodness diet soft drink. I like Fresca. Let's go to the Tropicana in Las Vegas where Harrison Frank presents the winners. Clothing brands that put you way ahead in quality value fashion. Botany 500 clothing, Steinblock clothes, Austin Leeds hand shaped suits, Christian Dior clothing. At Harrison Frank, you choose from the greatest clothing selection in the West. You'll find exactly the style that suits your personality, your particular taste. When you buy your clothing at Harrison Frank, you never gamble. You always pick a winner. Harrison Frank, 43 stores throughout the West, where the winning fashions are. Charge it. Folks, trade in your old Volkswagen on a brand new one. Is this a new one? Which way, America? Today at 5.30. Super Bowl V is brought to you by Chrysler Corporation. Extra care in engineering. Your host today, your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Okay. Everything all right? From Cape Girardeau, Missouri now, the Southeast Missouri State College proudly presents its Golden Eagle Marching Band. The director is Leroy Mason, and their formation is joined by the South Dade High School Marching Group. So here we are with Dallas leading 13 to 6 at halftime, and let's watch the entertainment. From Cape Girardeau, Missouri, Southeast Missouri State College proudly presents its Golden Eagles Marching Band. The state of Missouri celebrates 150 years of statehood during 1971, and it is the wish of all Missourians to invite their fellow Americans to capture a glimpse of history and enjoy the beauty of the great outdoors in the Show Me State during this sesquicentennial year. The Golden Eagles begin their show today by forming the symbol of all of our United States. From coast to coast, the National Football League, like our great nation of 50 states, stands strong and united today. This year marks the completion of its first 50 years of competition, and the league has grown to 26 teams, divided into the National and American Football Conferences. Here is a Golden Eagle salute to both conferences. next maneuver has received nationwide acclaim. The band prepares to present its Times Square marquee as it marches into its lineup position.
We invite you to watch the intricate maneuver made famous by the Golden Eagles as they salute the winner of this Super Bowl game today with letters floating endlessly across the field. In a map outline of the United States, we salute the 26 great NFL teams and the cities they represent as they are spread across this great land of ours. In the territory of the original 13 colonies, we find in the north, close by the Statue of Liberty, the New York Giants and the New York Jets. Near the roaring Niagara Falls, the Buffalo Bills, and in the city of the famous Tea Party, the Boston Patriots. In our cradle of liberty, the Philadelphia Eagles. And in the land of the Minutemen, the American Conference champion, Baltimore Colts. In our national capital, the Washington Redskins. And in the deep south, the Atlanta Falcons. Within the Florida Purchase, the old Northwest Territory, and along the Great Lakes and the waterways of the Great Mississippi Valley, we find among the orange groves and sandy beaches, the Miami Dolphins. Along the Mississippi and Ohio River steamboat country, the St. Louis Cardinals and the Cincinnati Bengals. At the junction of the overland trails and stagecoach routes, the Kansas City Chiefs. Along the Great Lakes, our industrial cities and their teams, the Detroit Lions, the Cleveland Browns, the Chicago Bears, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. In the winter wonderland of the Paul Bunyan country, the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers. And way down yonder at the mouth of the mighty Mississippi, in the birthplace of jazz, the New Orleans Saints. In the Lone Star State of Texas, land of the cowpokes and oil wells, the Houston Oilers, and the National Conference champion, Dallas Cowboys. In the far west, near the majestic peaks of the Rocky Mountains, and in a winter sports playground, we have the Denver Broncos. And on the west coast, home of the great movie industry and the Oscars, the San Francisco 49ers, the Oakland Raiders, the San Diego Chargers, and the Los Angeles Rams. 
As we pay tribute to this National League of Competitive Sports, we reaffirm our faith in the country whose character it represents. Ladies and gentlemen, a voice of America, Miss Anita Bryant. I've seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. The faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword is true, is marching Today's pregame and halftime show was produced by Ernest E. Seiler, Executive Vice President of the Orange Bowl Committee. Our cast was the Southeast Missouri State College Band.
We're 13 to 6, Dallas here at halftime. We've got the official statistics for the first half. Each team had six first downs. Baltimore had the uh, most offensive yardage, most of them on one play, a 76-yard pass play, 154 yards to 135 yards for Dallas. And rushing, Baltimore only 19 yards rushing, 49 for Dallas. And passing, Baltimore 135 to 86. We have a, a wrong statistic here. The turnovers are the key to the first half. Two interceptions by Dallas and Baltimore's fumbled the ball away twice. They have here only one fumble, but Gardeen fumbled a punt away and United's fumbled. Dallas has not had a turnover. They have played mistake-free ball. And of course, the uh, the big ending of the half when Baltimore had the ball on the Dallas two-yard line with a first and goal to go and couldn't punch it in. Well, as you point out, it really has been a matter of turnovers. Uh, Baltimore has stopped the Dallas running game, I would say, fairly well. 49 yards is uh, holding that particular running offense pretty good. And also Dallas has held the Baltimore passing uh, with the exception of that long pass play that resulted in the controversial, uh, I'm sure, play from the Dallas Cowboys standpoint. Johnny Unitas passing to Eddie Hinton. This is the play, Unitas going back. He'll be passing for Eddie Hinton. Hinton will touch the ball. It'll be tipped up in the air. The Cowboys' Cornell Green also was in on the play. And the official said that he had also tipped it before it landed in the Colts' John Mackey's hands. Mackey, number 88, will catch it as he continues on. And there's Mackey just about ready to haul it in. And this was the long touchdown play that the Dallas Cowboys, I'm sure, were quite concerned about as to whether it was actually tipped by their Cornell Green or not. But thus far, it has been a matter of who's made the fewest mistakes. Uh, Dallas certainly not running all over Baltimore, doing a, a fairly good job. Baltimore not outpassing Dallas. Uh, certainly, but doing a fairly good job, and it's been the fumbles and the interception. Now, the Colts are coming back on. We'll get word just before the half. You think they'll continue with Morrill? I think so. If Johnny's not able to play, you know, it's just a matter of whether he is physically able to or not. Uh, I know if he is, I think they will go back with United. We're going to take a look now at Dwayne Thomas's touchdown run. This is after the Dallas Cowboys had uh, scooped up Johnny United's fumble, and... Uh, Here's Morton now feeding Thomas. And this is just a little dump pass off to the right. Good blocking out in front. And this will be number 20 Bolt coming in, I think, to try to make the tackle. And just misses. As he goes across, Billy Ray Smith makes the tackle. Well, the score is Dallas 13 and Baltimore 6 as we get ready for the second half kickoff of the 1971 Super Bowl game. When your company orders a copier from 3M, we want you to receive the copier that's going to do your business the most good. For example, we have a compact desktop unit, ideal for a few copies a day. On the other hand, there's a copier that's completely automatic, from feeding originals to sorting copies into sets. We also have a machine that features continuous stream feeding of originals and a new high-speed copier that creates sharp, black-on-white copies on ordinary bond weight paper. And if you want color, 3M now offers a machine that reproduces any original in full color. So let us help you decide which 3M copier can lower your copying cost. See and compare them all at your 3M Business Products Center. As we mentioned in the first quarter, the very first Super Bowl winner was coached by Vince Lombardi. And the following year, his team came back and they won it again. Vince won't be with us today. And Brian Piccolo, the Bears running back, won't be on hand for today's game either because cancer claimed them both. Now, scientists and physicians tell us that we can beat cancer, but it's going to take continuing research. The National Football League is asking for your help. Please, send a dollar or 10 or whatever you can to Super Bowl Cancer Fund, Box 800, Grand Central Station, New York, New York, zip code 117. Believe me, this disease can be beaten. Thank you very much. There's Tom Landry. 
Kyle, you played with Tom Landry. Tell us about him. Well, you know, a lot of people, I think, uh, have the wrong impression of Tom because he's so serious, usually. But he is really, I think, he has a very dry sense of humor, a uh, very dry wit. But what makes him so serious is that, uh, you know, he's calling the plays, and he is always a play or two ahead of what's happening on the field. And he can't go around being a cheerleader, patting guys on the back and uh, saying nice going. He is constantly thinking, constantly thinking about what's going on. Both are quiet men. Don McCafferty is, is not a holler guy. He's a private man. But when he says something, he means it. He's had the complete respect of his players this year. Baltimore is going to receive on your right. Mike Clark will kick off from your left. $15,000 per man for the winner of this game. $7,500 for the loser. If it's a tie, we'll have a sudden death. Here's the kick by Clark. Duncan fields it on the seven. He's to the 20. Oh, he fumbles. And he was really racked up, and the ball, he was hit by Claxton Welch, who jarred the ball loose. That's the fifth Baltimore turnover. Dallas ball, jarring tackling today by the Cowboys. They've now jarred three men loose in the ball. They've had two interceptions. It's a first down for Dallas on the Baltimore 31. And remember in the Super Bowl here two years ago, New York Jet leading 7-0. Baltimore got the ball at the start of the second half, and Tom Matty fumbled it away. Now here now are the Cowboys out, first down on the Baltimore 31. Dwayne Thomas to the 25 and to the 23-yard line before he's hit there by Ray May. If my records are correct, that's a third fumble for Baltimore to go along with two intercepted passes. That's five big turnovers. Dallas has been able to convert uh, only two field goals on two of them, and then the one touchdown. Dwayne Thomas in the first half at 23 yards on the ground. He now has 30. Coming back on a delay is Garrison for a first down to the Baltimore 15. And he's hit by Ray May again with help from Mike Curtis. Dallas ball. They smell blood now. They have a first down on the Baltimore 15 and the opening of the second half. Morton is the quarterback. Dwayne Thomas and Walt Garrison, the running backs. Reggie Rucker flanks to the right and Bob Hayes to the left. Dennis Norman is the tight end. Thomas is dropped by number 83, Ted Hendricks, and number 74, Billy Ray Smith. It's on the 13-yard line of Baltimore. It's second down and eight. Going off is Hendricks, and coming on to replace him is Bob Grant, number 51. Hendricks was injured on that last play, the outside right linebacker. Second down, eight. Dallas Cowboys in the Baltimore 13. Garrison cutting back, and he's to the seven-yard line. As you saw the cutback when he saw the daylight inside. Ray May hit him again, the third tackle in a row, and Ted Hendricks returns to the game as an outside linebacker replacing Bob Grant. It'll now be third down and two to go for a first down for Dallas. Dallas taking advantage of that lateral pursuit on the part of Baltimore. I'm sure from up in the press box in that first half, at the halftime, they went over this, having their runners cut back against the green. Third and two. Thomas running on his own to the two-yard line, ridden down by Fred Miller, 76. Here's another look at it, as you would look at it from the end zone. Brought down by Fred Miller, and Miller, I think, giving him uh, the tackle from the angle in which he was pursuing him, uh, gained another yard for Dallas. Calvin Hill comes in now. Reggie Rucker goes out. Garrison stays in. And they're going into their... They'll have uh, Thomas and Hill with the two tight ends. The old standard T. They give it to Thomas. 
And Thomas trying to spin to that goal line. And he's in. Wait a minute, he fumbled at the goal line. He fumbled right at the goal line. And Dallas is unhappy now. He lost the ball as he spun back toward the goal line. That's the first turnover for Dallas, and it cost him six points. Greg Morton letting the officials have it as he comes off. On the half yard line, Baltimore's ball. They were, they'll have to get it out of here or clear it out. If they had been scored on, they were in serious trouble early in the second half. They're still in trouble. Nowatsky out to his three yard line as Earl Morrill's trying to get some running room. Here's the bubble, Kyle. That fumble again. And as they're driving in, this is Thomas uh, trying to spin around. And there goes the ball down. And numbers, it uh, looked like Billy Ray Smith, 74, recovered it. Or Mike Curtis, one of the two in that pileup. Second down, eight to go. Baltimore on their three yard line. They're trailing 13 to six. Boulash trying to find an opening. He just can't get any running room today. The big rookie from TCU was going to get married uh, next Saturday. Now down to Bill Ennis. Now let's quickly go down to Bill Ennis. Kurt Earl Morrill is the quarterback. As you know, Johnny Unitas has not come back out on the field. Right now, we understand from the Baltimore bench, he is having his ribs x-rayed. And it is not known at this time whether he will be back or not. But right now, this ball game is in the hands of Earl Morrill. Back up to you. We'd say it would be doubtful. Unitas said in the first half, we said earlier, I'm all right. But he really got a crack from George Andre. He damaged those ribs. Very painful condition. Third down now and four. Baltimore on their seven-yard line. And roaring through goes Norm Bulash out to his 14. A first down for the Colts. Bulash. Interesting story about him. Watch his blocking. Curry going off to his left. Wrestler making the little short trap, number 62. And Bulash right between, just a short trap, the left guard and the center. And Bulash leaves the game. He's replaced by Sam Haverlack, number 17. First down, Baltimore in their 14. Now they've got some operating room. Earl Morrow, pump faking. Fires to Hinton. Hinton can't get it. And defending there with him was Mel Renfro, right on him like a piece of adhesive tape. Second down, 10. A lot of bumping going on downfield, but of course Renfro can do that until that ball is put in the air, and he's given Hinton a pretty good chuck as he came down about 10 yards. And Hinton, of course, was slowed down by that contact, trying to fight his way out to the sideline. Renfro plays his receiver tighter than Adderley does. Adderley usually plays loose. Second down, 10. Baltimore on their own 14-yard line. Dallas leading 13 to 6 in the third period. Right down the middle to Haverlack at the 30. Haverlack at the 35 to the 39. A second year man from Bucknell, Sam Haverlack, tackled by Mel Renfro, and Baltimore has a first down. Put it on their 40. And as you can see, Baltimore doesn't lose uh, much efficiency when they change quarterbacks. Earl Marl, who led the Colts into the Super Bowl two years ago, certainly effective in this drive. His coach McCaffrey, when asked if anything happened to, to Unitas, he said, I don't worry. I've got a great quarterback behind him. Earl Morrow. First down, Baltimore under 40. A draw play to Nowatsky. Nowatsky. Striding to his 46 yard line. The hit was made by Jethro Pugh, number one, and then Dave Edwards, secondly. Cornell Green in the pileup. It's a gain of six. Second down, four to go, and his drive started at the Baltimore half-yard line. And a smart call by Marl. He's trying to cut down that tremendous charge by the Cowboy front four. Lilly, Pugh, Cole, Andre, trying to give them an off-speed play. Marl now is three out of six in the game. Feeds it to Haverlack. Haverlack's to his 48-yard line. Dave Edwards, the outside left linebacker of Auburn, an eight-year man. Brought him down. The Dallas linebackers are not big. They're among the smallest in pro football, but they're very, very quick. Third down 
and a foot to go. Don McCafferty brings Eddie Hinton out. Haverlack comes out. Now they want some power in there. The extra tight end's gone in. And Boulash is back in. On the 49-yard line of Baltimore, third and a foot. And he's at the 50. It looks like he has the first down, Boulash. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Inquiry with Sheriff Peter Pitches at 5 on KNBC Los Angeles. This is Kurt Gowdy, Kyle Rode, and Bill Ennis from the Super Bowl. A first down for the Baltimore Colts. Eddie Hinton comes back in his flanking back. Tom Mitchell, a tight end, leaves the game. Baltimore on their 50-yard line. Or just nudging into Dallas territory. Where the ball is resting now is emblematic of the Vince Lombardi Trophy. Which will be the official trophy for the Super Bowl winner. And its outline is on the field in silver and black. You'll see it in the winner's clubhouse after the game. Morrow going to the sideline to Jefferson, and it's incomplete. Herb Adderley and Jefferson scrambling for the ball. Adderley, a great running back at Michigan State. The late coach Lombardi said, I nearly made a mistake and put that boy on offense. Luckily, I got him on defense where he became one of the greats. Action will continue here at the Super Bowl. The score, the Dallas Cowboys 13, the Baltimore Colts 6. Razor blade shimmy. You can't see it happen on your face. So I'll show you what it's like on this bar of soap. Double-edged blade shimmy, because the razor doesn't hold them very firmly. Band razors don't make shaving any smoother. They have a shimmy all their own. Fortunately, there's the Schick injector system with a razor that locks the blade in this tight. That controls the shimmy, so you shave your whiskers much smoother, more evenly. The Schick injector system. Try it. To the equitable agent, no two people are alike. Is there anyone else in the whole human race with your kind of style and your kind of grace? No two people are exactly alike. And that's what the equitable agent never forgets. All his training and thinking are shaped around you and your life insurance needs. To the equitable agent, there's nobody else exactly like you. Nobody else like you. Second and long for Baltimore. So two extra linebackers go in, D.D. Lewis and Tom Stinchick for Dallas, and an extra secondary man, Mark Washington. Edwards and Howley leave the game and we'll have a three-man rush. Pugh went out as a lineman. Three men up front now. They're looking for the pass on second and ten. Baltimore on the 50-yard line. Big rush on him. And he read it and he hit Boulash at the 43 of Dallas. They were blitzing on it with a three-man prevent. Charlie Waters making the tackle. And here's Earl. You'll see Mark Washington, number 46, come flying through there. There's Andre coming out to the right. And another Red Dog, 56, Tom Stenchett. And he got it away just in time. Boulash with a good reception. Third and four now. Ray Perkins comes in, and Boulash has gone out. They have three wide receivers in now, Baltimore. Morrow. Bad pass right in the hand of Leroy Jordan. Pass was intended for Perkins, Ray Perkins, and Morrow threw a bad pass. And Holly had a wide open, I mean, Jordan had a wide open shot at it. And O'Brien is coming in now to try a long field goal. Jim O'Brien. Morrow trying to hit Perkins down there, and there were three linebackers for Dallas in that one area D.D. Lewis, Leroy Jordan, and Chuck Holly. This will be a 52-yard field goal attempt by Jim O'Brien. Earl Morrill is holding, and back is Mel Renfro as a safety man for Dallas. The kick is up there, and it is fading to the left. And is going to be dead on a on the one. one-inch line. Yeah. Dead on the one-inch line. You can't, that's almost like pitching pennies. 
Action will continue here at the Super Bowl. The score, the Dallas Cowboys 13 and the Baltimore Colts 6. It's a fact. Chrysler Plymouth offers more kinds of new cars than anyone else, including Duster, Satellite, Roadrunner, Fury, Chrysler, and now a new entry in the subcompact field, the little car that can. Here comes Cricket, coming through. Chrysler Plymouth, coming through. New Cricket from Plymouth has four doors and gives you family-sized room, gives you good gas economy, and things you can't get in some other import size cars, like power disc brakes in front, standard. Big 14 cubic foot trunk. And Cricket is Chrysler engineered, Chrysler built. Cricket, only 1915. Manufacturer's suggested retail price. Excluding state and local taxes, destination and suggested dealer new car preparation charges. At selected Plymouth dealers. <laughs> On that kick by O'Brien, looked like Mel Renfro blew it. Uh, he thought the ball was going in the end zone. He could have picked the ball up on the one or two yard line and maybe run it back 15 or 20 yards, Kyle. And uh, as they had it on uh, the Baltimore six inch line a moment ago, now they're on their one inch line. So <laughs> now Dallas has pinned back against their own goal line as Craig Morton gets it out to the three where Ray May and Billy Ray Smith. Baltimore had the ball on their half yard line. Now Dallas had it on their one foot line. And they're on their own three now. Of course it all looks easier up here but down in the field much tougher. And Renfro evidently thought that ball was going to skip on in. And it wouldn't take that backspin. He had time to pick it up and maybe come back up field 10 or 15 yards with it. Garrison and Dwayne Thomas behind Morton. That's Dwayne Thomas, and he's met at the three or four yard line by the right side of that Baltimore defense. Mike Curtis, he's been all over the field today. And helping him, number 85, Roy Hilton. Third down, Dallas on their four yard line. We have four minutes and 12 seconds to play in the third period. Dallas is leading 13 to 6. Let's see what they do here. They put Reggie Rucker in motion, the flanker. They stop the play at the three. And nearly jumping off was Billy Ray Smith. Roy Hilton making that tackle in the uh, Cowboys' backfield. Came across very strong. So it's fourth down now. The punting team is on, and Baltimore has a real shot now at some field position. You know, Baltimore has not tried to block a punt yet. They've just been holding up that Dallas team, but they have them backed up in this end zone. We'll see if they try and get in and block it. Gardine is the safety man. Ron would be punting. It's a good kick. Gardine takes it on the 48 of Dallas, trying to get outside. Look at that quickness of that Dallas coverage. A flag goes down. A flag went down, and I believe a clipping has been called. Might be clipping against Jack Maitland, I think. Maitland clipped, and that'll cost them 15 and put them back in their own territory. Those are the penalties that coaches gnaw their teeth over. You know, on that punt, uh, Baltimore did not try to block it. Again, they were trying to hold up the Dallas men from going downfield, hoping that they could get Gardine back on a good run back. And then with the clipping penalty, he lost another 15 yards. Johnny Unitas now is warming up. He injured his ribs in the second quarter, had to leave the game when George Andre, the defensive right end of Dallas, hit him. He's had treatment, x-rays, and now there's a timeout. Action will continue here at the Super Bowl. The score is Dallas 13 and Baltimore 6. To the equitable agent, no two people are alike. Is there anyone else in the whole human race with your kind of style and your kind of grace? 
No two people are exactly alike, and that's what the Equitable Agent never forgets. All his training and thinking are shaped around you and your life insurance needs. To the Equitable Agent, There's nobody else exactly like you. Nobody else like you. Men, when you take it off with Noxema medicated shave, you know how close you can get, hmm? This close. They have x-ray facilities right here in the Orange Bowl. Unitas took preventive x-rays at the halftime to be sure he had nothing broken. He has damaged ribs, but maybe he'll be back in. First and 10 for Baltimore in their 39-yard line. They're trailing 13 to 6. They give the ball to Nowatsky. Nowatsky hit right along the line of scrimmage. Coming up was Herb Adderley, a deadly tackler on the outside to dump him. Let's go down to Bill Ennis. Kurt, the report on Johnny Unitas is that he does have a very, very slight hairline fracture in the right rib cage, and it is very doubtful he will see any more action this afternoon. However, he is heavily taped, and he is back out on the field. Now, let's go back upstairs. A hairline fracture in the rib cage for Unitas. He's heavily taped, as Bill Ennis said. Doubtful if he'll be back. Second down, nine. So it's up to Earl Morrill now, the other veteran quarterback. Morrill is going deep. He's got the Wasky right over. Right down the middle, and he had him wide open as he came out of the backfield. And here we'll take a look at it. That's Bulash, 36 in the backfield, staying in. Nowatsky circled around his left end, right down in the open. Looked like 54 Howley, 55 Jordan. Someone missed picking him up. There's Adderley coming in. Adderley saved the touchdown. And now it's first. And 10 for Baltimore and the Dallas 15. The score is the Cowboys 13, the Colts 6. A minute and a half to go in the third period. Morrow to Bulash. Bulash to the 12 of Dallas. Met there by Larry Cole first. Waters came up from the safety position and Leroy Jordan and Dave Edwards. Dallas, a quick pursuing team. Gang tackling. Morrill has now completed five out of ten today for 127 yards. Baltimore has a lead in first down. Baltimore has moved the ball better this half than they did the first half. Unitas was three out of nine before he left. Greg Morton is at eight out of 16. Second down, seven to go. The Colts on the Cowboy 12. Quarterback draw, and he's to the 11, and that's it. Jethro Pugh around the ankles, him number 75. And saved the day with that little ankle tackle, too, because looked like Earl was being, if he could have gotten by him, he could have picked up one other blocker downfield. Looked like Bob Vogel, 72, might have been out in front. Tom Landry nervously pacing those sidelines. The clock is moving with 20 seconds to go in the third period. Don McCafferty just looking up at the clock. Tom Matty, the injured halfback who's shading his eyes with the sun. They may not get this play off. There's the gun. That's the end of the third quarter in the 1971 Super Bowl game with a score. The Dallas Cowboys 13, the Baltimore Colts 6. The Goodyear Custom Wide Tread Polyglass Tire. Portland, you still got a good three hours, lady. Thank you. Polyglass is mileage. Wow, those lights. Polyglass is traction. Fred, are we there yet? Polyglass is strength. This is the Goodyear Custom Wide Tread Polyglass Tire.
Inside, two fiberglass belts, plus today's most preferred tire body cord, polyester, pioneered by Goodyear. Traction. Strength. Long mileage, too. Polyglass is value. And remember, if it doesn't say Goodyear, it can't be polyglass. Two million people in Pakistan are faced with starvation, exposure, disease. Pakistan flood was the worst natural disaster of this century. It will be a greater disaster if we don't care. Whatever amount you can to save the survivors, Pakistan Relief Fund, Box 1670, Washington, D.C., 20013. Now, this is Kurt Gowdy, Kyle wrote Bill Ennis. We're going out of the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. Baltimore had the ball on the Dallas two-yard line at the end of the first half. Four cracks couldn't take it over. Now they're threatening again. One interesting thing, Baltimore has been a conservative team. No gimmicks today. During the year, they've always had a trick player to in the game. They have not used a gimmick or trick play in this game yet. On third down, Morrow's pass is intercepted in the end zone. And it's intercepted there by Chuck Howley. That's his second interception. Six turnovers for Baltimore today. Three interceptions and three fumbles. There's he not only had the ball intercepted, I think he gets pretty good rush on him right here at the end, coming in from his left. There it is, George Andre. Well, the Dallas Cowboys now, first down on their 20. Big hole open, coming through. Look at that staying power by Walt Garrison. Garrison is a quick hitter and has that balance that makes him hard to bring down. Dwayne Thomas is the fluid type of runner. Smooth, fluid, just seems to flow in and out. This, this man is the hitter and the tough man to bring down. He must have a great uh, level of pain resistance. As he is, we say, he's playing with a bad ankle, a chip bone in his shoulder, all sorts of injuries. He just picked up 19 yards, play action pass. It goes to Bob Hayes and he can't catch it. That's Frank Morton playing the run. Got that ball up a little high for him with Jim Duncan defending against Bob Hayes. Now it's second down, 10 for Dallas. And in comes Dennis Norman to tie it in with a play to his quarterback, Greg Morton. Dallas had won five, lost four. They just been defeated badly by the Cardinals, 38 to nothing. Landry said, we've got to do something about it to save the season. I'm going to start calling the signals and take the pressure off Morton. It worked. They won seven in a row since. A release to Dwayne Thomas. And he goes down on his 42-yard line, hit first by Ray May, who's been tremendous as a linebacker today, the former USC star. Also, Billy Ray Smith, number 74 on him. Third down for the Cowboys, seven to go on their 42-yard line. They're leading 13 to six, just under 14 minutes to play in Super Bowl V. Let's go! The Colts have never been ahead in this game. Dan Reeves now is in the backfield. They send Garrison on the right wing. And now they ask for a time, and they'll have two timeouts left. They were messed up in their formation, and rather than botch a play, Martin asks for time and comes over now to talk her over with Landry. Timeout. Action will continue here at the Super Bowl. The score, the Dallas Cowboys 13, the Baltimore Colts 6. They have just turned the lights on here at the Orange Bowl. The shadows now are starting to creep out over from the near side of the field and especially down to the end zone on your left. And they want to knock those shadows. Third and seven, Dallas on their 42-yard line, leading 13 to 6 in the fourth period to Dan Reeves, and Reeves is hit by Logan. I think he stopped him short of the first down. Logan, the strong safety, coming up very quickly to tackle him. He's a yard or two short of a first down. Jerry Logan of West Texas State. An excellent safety man. It'll be a punt formation now, and Ron Whitby in. On fourth and two. 
Ron Gardeen, the rookie of Arizona waiting. High end over end kick. Gardeen fair catches it on his 18 yard line. Baltimore back to the attack. Stay tuned for the Bing Crosby Pro Man Golf. Right after the Super Bowl game, we'll switch to Pebble Beach, California, and the always colorful Bing Crosby Golf Tournament. 13 to 6, Dallas ahead. 12 minutes, 45 seconds remaining in the game. Johnny Unitas injured in the second period, has not been back. Earl Morrill's been running the team. Both teams have lost chances. Dallas fumbled on the Baltimore goal line in this half. Dallas couldn't take it in two yards out of the end of the first half. Sam Haverlax in the game now. Earl Morrill is going deep to Jefferson. And it's incomplete. Baltimore fans are calling interference that he was tripped up. Herb Adderley running stride for stride with Roy Jefferson. But the official says no. Dallas still putting that pressure on up the middle. Bob Lilly, Jethro Pugh doing that little cross dealing up the middle. There's Norm Bulash, the number one drive choice for Baltimore. They have him on the bench now. They have Haverlick in the backfield. Second down, 10 to go. Baltimore on their 18. Hitton spreads left, Roy Jefferson right. Haverlick in the watch, he's set behind Morrill. Morrow in trouble. He's a down the field on a broken play to Roy Jefferson. <laughs> Nearly hit the play. Herb Adderley was over there covering him. It'll be third down and ten now for the Colts. And Morrow just averted disaster there. And with the third down, you might look in the middle of that defensive line for Dallas. See what they do to get in. Because they have been doing all sorts of deals up the middle. Pew and Lilly. They'll crisscross. One will take three men with him, freeing the other one up as he makes the little cross around him. Baltimore was supposed to have the passing game here. They've hit only eight out of 22 passes. They have a third and ten. Audible being called. Who hit was out there. Flag goes down. Eddie Hinton was a step beyond. Waters is arguing. And Hinton nearly broke that one. If he'd have caught that ball, he was gone. As it was, they had fall interference. Of course, the reason he a couldn't catch ball. it was because he was interfered with. And this is a penalty. Automatic first down for the Colts on their 31 yard line. not getting too much time at all back there. He's been having to throw, I'm sure, a little sooner than he's wanted to. The pass rush has been a big difference today. Dallas has put more pressure on the passer than the Colts have. Both teams have stopped the running game. Morrow gives it away to Jefferson, right on target. Beautiful pass. First down for Baltimore on the Dallas 46. Adderley made the tackle on Roy Jefferson, who beat him inside. Getting good protection this time, however. Morrow getting that ball away to Jefferson. Herb Adderley coming in to watch Jefferson run his route all alone. A little change of pace, working on Adderley, curling inside. This will be Adderley going down for his ankles to take him down. Now in two strikes, Morrow has moved him from his 18 to the Dallas 46. Dallas ahead 13 to 6 in the fourth quarter. 11 and a half to go. Draw play to Nowatsky, and he's down to the line of scrimmage, slowed up by Leroy Jordan and Chuck Howley. Jordan is 55. He's, he, like Ted Hendricks, has been trying to put on weight, can't do it. He weighs 213. But I remember Kyle doing the Orange Bowl game when Namath was a sophomore, and he was an All-American linebacker. He made 24 tackles in that game against Oklahoma. And Bear Bryant made the famous statement, if they stay within the sidelines, Leroy will get them. And he did that day. He roamed all over that field. Second down, 10. Baltimore on the Dallas 46. He dumps it off to Haverlack. Haverlack trying to get up, can't do it. He's down on his 44. Adderley 
up into him, Herb Adderley. So it only goes for two yards. And now it's third down and eight. Adderley, great reaction time then. Because out uh, to his right in the flat was Haverlack. Looked like no one around him. And suddenly there was Adderley. And Adderley, obviously, uh, Dallas in his zone rolled up to that side. Otherwise, Adderley would have been deep with Jefferson. But on that play, he had no deep responsibility. And he was in an excellent position for Haverlack. Big third down play now for Earl Morrow. Third and eight on the Dallas 44. Blitz is on. They blitz him. It's up for grabs. And it's incomplete. They got penalties downfield. Cornell Green apparently interfering. Flag downfield. Boy, what a blitz they had that time. They came with the kitchen sink. And there's a illegal use of the hands now. I think it's against Cornell Green for holding. He held John Mackey, who had broken loose. And that gives Baltimore an automatic first down. That's two first downs they picked up on this drive on penalty. Baltimore on the Dallas 39-yard line. Baltimore trailing 13 to 6, 10 minutes to go. Remember, if the game is in a tie, we'll have sudden death overtime. And the first team that scores will win. to the left, Roy Jefferson to the right. Nowatsky roaring through, powers his way to the 31 of Dallas. Tom Nowatsky, a Detroit Lion cast off. Bob Lilly and Jerry Cole dragged him down from behind. An eight-yard gain at second down and two to go for the Baltimore Colts. Move out down the Cowboys, 13 to nine. They have 227 yards in passing to 108 for Dallas. Dallas has the edge on the ground. Haverlack. There's that old flea flicker. He just throws it away and uh, completes it to Eddie Hinton. Hinton at the 15. Fumbles the ball into the end zone. And on the ball is the loose ball and out of the end zone. Touchdown and fumble in the end zone and out for a touchdown. And this was a play Haverlock was supposed to throw back tomorrow, but he fires downfield instead. And that was sort of just the last second thought on his part. And this is Hinton. And now we'll see the fireworks. Green hits his arm. The ball starts bouncing around. He gets tackled by Mel Renfro. He can't get up. Here comes Green again. The ball's still bouncing and still out. It's a touchback. Back. We'll explain it when we come back. A uh, heartbreaker for the Colts. Action will continue here at the Super Bowl. The crowd roaring as the Dallas Cowboys lead 13 to 6. Now here's the play again here. Fake that old flea flicker they used against the Jets two years ago. And this is Hinton, Kyle. Now watch the impetus is from the attacking team. He wasn't to the goal line yet. And it's out of the end zone, but the impetus was put on by the attacking team. Rule the touchback. And we've had some wild plays in this game. First down for Dallas. We nearly had a tie game here on that one as Garrison picks up three. Baltimore has been so close twice. They were on the two-yard line, couldn't score in four cracks. And it looked like Hint was going in for the touchdown when they knocked the ball out of his arm here, they'd have kicked the point, it'd have been a tie game. It's 13 to six Dallas. Baltimore scored on a deflected pass play from one of their men, Hinton, to the Dallas Cowboy back and then to Mackey for 76 yards in the first half. Morton, to Dwayne Thomas who had his back to the play. A hard rush that time by Bubba Smith, Roy Hilton, and Mike Curtis. Third down and seven to go. And actually, that uh, play you remember in the Super Bowl two years ago, Morrow threw the ball or gave the ball to Mackey, who lateraled it back to Morrow. 
And Morrow threw the ball down the middle instead of the Jimmy Orr who was wide open in the end zone. This time it was to Haverlack who looked like he was trying to go back to Morrow with it. And he threw the ball in nearly connected for a touchdown. Third down. In intercepted. Rick Folk at the 20. At the 10. Folks to the 2. Baltimore. First and goal. Rick Folk number 21. Here it is. Martin going back. Getting some pressure from his right by Roy Hilton. And the ball is bounced up. And there's 21, Rick Bolt. Stepping over Hendricks, trying to get going. Here comes 88 coming into the play. Reggie Rucker. All right, it's first down and goal to go for Baltimore. They couldn't take it in at the end of the first half. They had four cracks with two yards to go and couldn't make it. Now let's see what they do. Nowatsky and Bulak behind Earl Morrow. It's to Nowatsky. He may pick up a half yard, and that's about it. They're having trouble inside, moving that Dallas defense around that goal line. Renfro submarining underneath, and Stinchick, number 56. It's right on the two-yard line. They gained a yard. Second down and two to go for a Baltimore touchdown. If they go in and score and kick the point, we've got a tie game, and maybe we could have a sudden death overtime if both teams hold. Nowatsky again, and he's in! Baltimore is in for the touchdown! Watch this blocking Curry at center. Wrestler Williams, the guard. Vogel, the left tackle. And here comes Nowatsky, and this is all power from that point on, as he's met there by Tom Stinchick, but he barrels right on through. Now watch it. They block the last point. Dallas is very good at blocking these points. Morrow will set it up for O'Brien. It could tie it if they get it through. The kick is good. It's a tie game. 13 to 13. If neither team scores the rest of this quarter, we may have a sudden death overtime. Action will continue here at the Super Bowl. The score now, Baltimore 13. Dallas 13. Jim O'Brien will kick off. Incidentally, Mark Washington nearly blocked that extra point again. He just missed. Cliff Harris, 43, and Mark Washington, 46 or deep. O'Brien kick it. High game now in the fourth period. They split it down. It's picked up by Harris. And he's racked up by number 61 there on the Baltimore Colts, Cornelius Johnson. A little jam up, but they settle the temper down. Dallas ball. First down. The Colts were uh, outplayed in a number of plays run off in the first half, but they've recovered now almost even as they've had the momentum here in the second half. First down for Dallas on their 35. Ooh, Garrison tipped down his 36 by Big Bubba Smith, number 78 whose father coached him in high school, also coached Ernie Ladd and his young brother, Cody Smith, who may be a number one draft pick coming off the USC team this year. As well to remember at this point where Martin has had his success in his passing game, mostly it has been the short passes with his backs working on those linebackers. Every time he's gone up deep, backfired on him a couple of times. Incidentally, I think Jim O'Brien has been injured, a place to get your ball him off. Play action pass. He shoots it out and completes it to Garrison. Garrison's nearly in the 50. The tackle made by Mike Curtis and from behind by number 74, Billy Ray Smith. Jim O'Brien hurt himself in that kickoff. He's number 80. They're working on it. Now, if this game is tied and goes down to, you know, the last minute or two and they need a field goal, it could be serious for Baltimore. Dallas at the first down on the 50-yard line. A tie game, ladies and gentlemen, 13 all, six minutes to go. We've had two overtime games in championship professional football. Kyle Rhodes participated in one, and the other one was in the American Football League. Thomas slides away from Ted Hendricks, who had a track at him behind the line of scrimmage, and then Ray May 
came up to make the tackle at the 50. Baltimore Colts in the famous 58 games, called the greatest game ever played. In the overtime, United took him down for the touchdown. A little over eight minutes of that one. In the famous AFL game, the longest game ever played in championship overtime, the Dallas Texans, the Houston Oilers. That was won by the Dallas Texans, 17 minutes and 10 seconds. They actually went into the second quarter of the overtime. Second down, 10. Dallas on the 50. They're in the slot right. Craig Morton's going to pass it. And he was really hit by number 76, Fred Miller, as he let that ball go. Miller got him from the right side, number 76, from LSU. Third down, Dan Reeves checks in. He's been a good pass catcher today, running pass routes out of the backfield for the Cowboys. Third down, 10. We have five minutes and 10 seconds remaining, a tie game, 13 all. Reggie Rucker flanks to the right, Bob Hayes to the left. Will they rush or will they prevent? They're going after him again, and he drops it off on the screen to Garrison, and he's hit down at the 46. Now they might try the long field goal. The tackle by Fred Miller once more. Right now the raging Buffalo all over this field. That's Garrison. Let's see what they're going to do. They're putting the punter in, Ron Whitby. The punter comes on. Fourth down, six to go. Dallas Cowboys will go in punt formation. Tom Landry. Ron Gardine back to receive the punt. And you know what's going through his mind. He fumbled one early in the game. But Dallas recovered deep in Baltimore territory and it led to a field goal. The kick is slapped back. And it's going to be Baltimore's ball first down on their five was slapped back by Harris. Cliff Harris prevented that ball from going into the end zone for a touchback. Here that the Colts scored on. The header is Eddie Hinton about to run in for a touchdown, losing the ball in a fumble. That roll out of the end zone with the impetus on the attacking team and called the touchback. First down now for Baltimore on their five. Four minutes to go. The game is tied. 13 to 13. Hang on to that ball. Says Tom Nowoski to himself as he comes to the nine-yard line where Leroy Jordan meets him, number 55. Clock is moving. Now we're going to see how each team plays it here. Are they going to play it cautiously? Or are they going to go for broke and try and hit something and get into a field goal position? Dallas has Baltimore pinned back. Right now you say Dallas has the best position. Three and a half minutes to go, a tie game. Nowoski again, trying to wriggle out of there, stopped at the 10 yard line. Third down, five to go for the Baltimore Colts. And they're taking their time now down at the end of the field. They got a tough five yards to make. Going in is D.D. Lewis, a very good linebacker, number 50, replacing Dave Edwards, number 52. There's Johnny Unitas, damaged his ribs in the second period, has not returned. He has a hairline fracture in the rib cage. He was under a hard rush all in the first half. And the other 15-year vet, Earl Morrow, had to take over and has done a great job. Third and five. Will he put it in the air? If he does, he'll be certain that he doesn't throw it away. He draws it to Bulash. Bulash is going to be stopped at the 10. No gain. And they've got to give the ball up. With two and a half minutes to play, David Lee will come in and kick the most important punt of his career. $15,000 riding, a $7,500 difference now on every play. Back are Bob Hayes and Mel Renfro. And Dallas will be in excellent field position unless they lose this punt. The two-minute warning is going to be coming up. There it is. Now the two-minute warning is being given to each sideline. Timeout. Action will continue here at the Super Bowl. The score, a tie. Baltimore 13, Dallas 13. The field goal kicker of Dallas. You may see him in here. We're in the last minute and 59 seconds. Dallas now is ready to receive a punt. They should be in good shape. Baltimore's had a minute to think about the snap from Tom Good, a big snap for him back to David Lee. 
A good snap. And he boots up beauty. Coming out to Hayes on the 48. He fumbles it out of bounds on the Baltimore 48. So Dallas now, for the intent, trying to score anyway. We're in the last minute and 52 seconds of the game. We like to extend NBC special appreciation to the hundreds of men and women associated with the National Football League this year and all their teams. What a job of cooperation they gave us. And here we'll talk a little bit more. Now we're in a tie game, ladies and gentlemen. A minute 52 to go. But stays tied at the end. We'll have a sudden death overtime. The pitch is to Thomas. He's knocked off his feet. And uh, down by Bubba Smith. But getting to him first, surging through with Billy Ray Smith. It is down on the 49-yard line of Baltimore. It is second down and 11 for the Cowboys. They're both being conservative. They're not taking timeouts. They're a minute and 25 seconds to go in the game. Dallas has two timeouts remaining. Baltimore has three. Look at that Baltimore line digger in there. Craig Martin is hit with a flag down. And coming through, Fred Miller, but a flag is dropped. It's holding by Ralph Neely, I think. And this could take him out of field goal range, really out of there. Way back. I believe it was Neely that foul. Holding. A 15-yard penalty. With a minute and nine seconds to go. A tie game. If it stays tied, three-minute intermission. Then we'll start all over again. The holding was at the 42-yard line. Mike Curtis talking there. Dallas has been penalized 10 times in this game for 125 yards. That's probably as much as they've been penalized in any game this year. Now let's see if Baltimore uses its timeouts to get the ball with a minute and nine seconds to go. Both teams have played it cautiously here. Dallas... Now back on her own 27-yard line. A second down. 35 yards to go. Slot right. Morton being chased by Bubba Smith. Unload, intercepted by Mike Curtis. Mike Curtis intercepts. And Baltimore has a chance now to win it. Baltimore has the ball on the Dallas 28. Mike Curtis intercepts for the flexed pass. And here's Curtis roaming. He is very good at dropping back. On the run, Morton is throwing this ball. And it's a deflected pass off the hands of Dan Reed. Curtis coming up with it on the 40. And runs it back to the 28. And Jim O'Brien will be the big man now. Jim O'Brien. There are 59 seconds left to go in the Super Bowl game. It's tied up. 13 to 13. Our spotters today have been Lou Engle and Will McDonough, our statistician Jack Hobbling, our production stage manager Huey McDermott. 80,000 fans. Jim O'Brien, who seemed to hurt himself on that last kickoff, dancing around. He could mean $15,000 for each Baltimore Colt if they go for the field goal here. And they're probably going to try and work it in somewhere in the middle of the field and take a shot at a winning field goal. Norm, Bulach, Nowoski are the running backs. Nationally, they're going to try and get it closer. They're going to play that clock. They're going to time it and hone it down until they get the last shot. Baltimore has never been ahead in this game. They were trailing 13 to 6. An interception set up their touchdown by Rick Volk. They gave the ball away six times, and now... Dallas has started to give the ball away. First down for Baltimore on the Cowboy 29. Bulash to the Cowboy 26, three yards closer to those goal posts for Jim O'Brien. 50 seconds to go. Taking the time, the Colts. They're playing it for the field goal. They're not calling timeout. O'Brien dancing around, getting that leg warmed up, getting ready to come in and try and give the Colts the world championship. If he misses it, we'll almost certainly go into an overtime. 
a sudden death overtime. 30 seconds to play in the game. They'll try and get this ball in the middle of the field. Bulash trying to run it into the middle, crosses the 25 to the 24. Now there are 20 seconds to go. The clock is still moving. They're down to 15 seconds remaining in a tie game. O'Brien poised, waiting to come on. Timeout called by Baltimore. Nine seconds. Here comes O'Brien for the field goal. That can either win it or send it into a tie in overtime. This is a youngster, Jim O'Brien, who was a receiver with the University of Cincinnati. He used to be the pass catcher for Greg Cook, who was a great young quarterback with Cincinnati that lost all season this year with a shoulder operation. Jim O'Brien, in his first regular pro season game, kicked the field goal in the last minute to beat San Diego. He's been slightly erratic at times. He says that is the kick you'll always remember. What about this one? $15,000 riding on this kick for the Colts. What can the Cowboys do? All they can do is come in and put the heat on, and then their bench, their fans, helplessly stand by and watch the flight of the ball. Nine seconds to go. The game tied. If O'Brien makes it, unless a miracle happens, the Colts are the world champs. It is going to be a 32-yard field goal attempt. Great position right in the middle of the field. Young Jim O'Brien, a rookie. And now, some more discussion going on. Thirteen to thirteen tie, nine seconds to go. All right, here you are now. What a and the kick is up, the kick is good! Jim O'Brien with five seconds. The Colts lead sixteen to thirteen. Jim O'Brien, 23 years old, born in El Paso, Texas, lives in Cincinnati. Right now, Tom Landry, impassive, must be heartbroken. He lost on the one-yard line against Green Bay. The next year, he lost in the last few seconds when Bart Starr sneaked it over. And here he is now with five seconds remaining and maybe about to again bitterly and heartbreakingly lose a world professional championship. Bob Lilly was so unhappy, the Dallas tackle, that he threw his helmet all the way to the Baltimore 30-yard line. And O'Brien, who maybe has just kicked his way into immortality, will now kick off. He'll probably try and squib it. They don't want any kind of a return with five seconds to go. This is the first close Super Bowl game. Really close one. And it went down. That ball was in the air. There it is, five seconds when O'Brien sent the 32-yard field goal through. The kick is squibbed. It's grabbed. Coming up with it and down on the 40-yard line. With one second to go, time has been called. Steve Kiner, a rookie from Tennessee, on that ball. And Dallas has one play left. Nowatsky, who carried the ball in for a touchdown. Don McCafferty, a rookie coach, but 21 years, a football assistant. Brink now on his greatest moment of his life. Tom Landry. Four years ago, Dallas on the Green Bay one-yard line and couldn't get it over in the closing minutes. The next year, they were leading when Green Bay sneaked over in the memorable frozen game at Green Bay. And here he had to stand on that sideline and watch that ball sail through with five seconds to go after his team had led from the opening quarter, although they were tied here late in the fourth quarter. Six defensive backs in now for Baltimore. One second to go. This will be the last play of the game. Will they try and get it to the world's fastest human, Bob Hayes, with his gold medal speed? Will they screen? Will they draw it? They have Hayes flanked to the far right. One play for Dallas. Morton is going to Bob Hayes, and it is intercepted. That's the ball game. 
It is intercepted by Logan, the Baltimore Colts are the world professional football champion. They finished with a rush. Rick Boak intercepted their number 21. He helped set up the touchdown that tied it for the extra point. Mike Curtis intercepted a pass and took it into field goal position. And Jim O'Brien, a rookie, kicked the winning field goal with five. Here he is, number 80, Jim O'Brien. Kyle Roach will be in the winning clubhouse. The American Conference champs, the Baltimore Colts, have defeated the Dallas Cowboys with five seconds left in the game. I tell you, I've broadcast 25 years of football. I've never had such a season. I had four of the George Flander games that were decided from eight seconds down to three seconds, and then to be fortunate enough to have this five-second field goal today. It was a game loaded with thrills, with unusual plays, with an injury to Unitas early, and just a tremendous championship game. That's the end of the game. The final score, the Baltimore Colts 16, the Dallas Cowboys 13. Okay, moving into the clubhouse of the Baltimore Colts, let's set up that wild finish. Late in the fourth quarter, Rick Volk intercepted a pass on the 20 and raced it to the, ball, to the uh, Dallas 3. Tom Nowoski plunged over from two yards out for the touchdown with 7.35 to go. Jim O'Brien kicked the extra point. Then it looked like Dallas might have the edge. They had Baltimore pinned back on their own five-yard line. Baltimore punted, and Dallas then threw the ball away. The costliest interception in their history, but Mike Curtis intercepted brought it in a field goal position, and a 23-year-old rookie, Jim O'Brien, booted the 32-yard field goal to give Baltimore the world championship with five seconds remaining. And you know, fans, what a moment today for Earl Morrow. He was humiliated here in this Orange Bowl two years ago by Joe Namath and the New York Jets. He had to be taken out in the second half when after winning the most valuable player of the National Football League, he could not move his team. Today, when Johnny Unitas became injured, it was the veteran Earl Morrow came in. And as I checked my figures, he hit six out of 15 for 138 yards. He rallied the Colts, he kept them in the game, and enabled them to win it in the last five seconds. Are we ready? Station break cue. We're going to pause for station identification. A shave you always wanted and more. We go down to the Baltimore Colts clubhouse. Of course, Don McCafferty and his coaching staff, uh, congratulations to them. They're the happiest people with, along with their players in America, as you'll soon hear. For Tom Landry, though, I'd like to say a word. A heartbreaking defeat for him. I thought the man did one of the greatest coaching jobs this year. When he brought his team back, everybody gave up on him. He refused to uh, give up on his team or his players. He held them together and brought them back for seven tough wins in a row. So, you have... You're going to see it. You're going to see the drama, the winner and the loser after a game like this. And we said at the start of the telecast, this in just five years is not just a championship game, but has become a unique happening on the American sporting scene. I think we're about ready to go down now to the Baltimore Colts Clubhouse, and let's go down to the world champs and the Kyle Rook. Thank you, Kurt. And here in the clubhouse of the world champion Baltimore Colts, We'd like to first have you meet the owner of the Baltimore Colts, Mr. Carol Rosenblum, the head coach, Mr. Don McCafferty, and the lovely lady who will be making the presentation of the award in the name of her late husband, Marie Lombardi, Mrs. Vince Lombardi. Marie? Congratulations. So happy for you. Thank you, too. Thank you, Kyle. Mr. Rosenblum. You know, it's difficult, Kyle, to find words to express how we feel. There is only one Vince Lombardi, there will never be another. And this makes this trophy just doubly precious to all of us. On behalf of Don McCafferty, my son Steve, and the great Baltimore Colts, we are deeply appreciative to you, Marie, and to the good Lord, because only he could have helped us get this victory. Carol, I know you perhaps uh, have a word for your hometown fans back in Baltimore. 
So the people back in volleyball, I know you're as happy as we are. You've been great fans. Stick with us and we'll try and get back. Thank you, Kyle. And to the other member of the Rose and Blue family, congratulations, Steve. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you. Well, Coach, I, I feel a little awkward calling you a rookie coach. Uh, having uh, <laughs> having faced your team for so many years, but congratulations on a fantastic job this year. Well, it is. The thing is, we were had a lot of bad breaks in that first half, and uh, our guys didn't quit. They hung in there, and uh, they're just fantastic. So well, proud of all of them. As you say, you had a lot of bad breaks to begin with. Uh, apparently, like like Tom Landry also said, it takes a lot of dedication, a lot of faith, a lot of uh, friendship, a lot of uh, teamwork to have something like that come off when you're down early in the ballgame. Uh, these players came a long way from the middle of July, and we got our ups and downs, and uh, it all ended up in the Super Bowl, and we're just happy to be here and win the ball game. Now, what about today's game? Where did uh, uh, you feel that your last chance came? Was that interception by Mike Curtis? Yes, I think that was the, uh, <laughs> the turning point right there. They got the penalty and pushed him back, and then uh, they had a throw there so deep in there. They, Mike came up with a big interception, and of course, Jimmy O'Brien, they're trying to rattle him in there, and uh, he's a great rookie coming through in, a, in the clutch. So we're just happy with all the guys. But Don, I know also it, it takes uh, more than uh, just a head coach and the players to make it. Your staff has done a tremendous job for you this year. My coaching associates, uh, the ownership, the uh, uh, administration, it's a great organization. Starts at the top and all the way down, all the way through the line. Uh, great people, and uh, we enjoy working for them and with them and all that stuff now. Don, is this moment winning the Super Bowl as you imagined it would be? Well, I never won one before, so uh, I think it's just a great feeling, and <laughs> I just hope we uh, have more like this in the years to come. You know, they mentioned that you and Tom Landry are two of the nicest people in pro football, and because there was a lack of uh, exciting exchange repartee between the two of you all week long, that uh, it, the game didn't carry the excitement it had. It really doesn't need that type of conversation, does it, before well, a ball game? The uh, players out there in both teams did a fine job and gave all, of the, all the excitement the fans wanted. They gave them good football. Uh, you, don't, you don't play with words, you play on the field. That's where it counts. Coach, congratulations again. We appreciate very much your spending this time with us. Good luck. And we'll be back with more about the Super Bowl game in just one moment. Well, we're here in the Colts locker room again, the world champion Baltimore Colts, I should say, Earl. Earl Marl, who came off the bench following the injury to Johnny Unitas. What a great game, Earl, and what a long time uh, you and John both have waited for this. Right, it's a long time since that last one, and uh, I tell you, this is what uh, we've worked for, and it's a great feeling being on this side, on the winning side, and uh, uh, just happy to be here. I tell you, I hate to see anything happen to Johnny. I just... Uh, for myself, uh, getting a chance to come back and play, and uh, we come out on a winning start. Our defense uh, did a tremendous job, got us that ball back, and uh, put us in that scoring position. I, I'm just tickled to think about it. Uh, it's a great feeling. Well, when you uh, faced uh, this situation where Dallas fumbled on the six-inch line, and you drove all the way out, it was one of the great drives. Really, you called your play so beautifully today. Well, I knew we were backed up. Uh, we had to get out and give ourselves a little room. Our line opened some holes, and... Uh, our backs picked and uh, hit the cracks, and uh, they're big backs, and they bowled for a couple extra yards, and uh, we made that first down. Give us a little room, and uh, they hit a couple passes that moved us down the field. You know, problem we did, we got down there, we didn't we didn't get the points on the board when we should have. Well, you know, credit where credit is due. That Dallas defensive line did a whale of a job today. They did. They they were right in there, and uh, uh, we had fellas open. I was hurrying, and uh, so was John, and. Uh, a couple of times, we just had a little extra second. Uh, we could have gotten people on, but uh, their line is good, and uh, they did a great job. I'm hoarse from yelling out there at the last part, Kyle. So it's a better feeling last time I was here. I would believe it, because I remember last time you were here, it was against the New York Jets. It didn't turn out uh, well. We had cameras in both the winning locker room and losing locker room. It could have been you last time. It is you this time. You called one play to Tom Nowatzki circling out of that backfield. Uh, we had not seen it all game long. I don't think we saw it again later, at least not in the same uh, area. Well, he was an alternate receiver. Uh, he comes out of the backfield, a, a short side flare, and I looked at him, and I started to go to my outside man turning in, and I saw nobody was, was going with him. So then I just laid it up to him and uh, let him run. I could have thrown another five yards further, but I saw him in the open. I just wanted to catch it and uh, get us down there, and uh, darn told we didn't score. <laughs> Earl, may you have 15 more great years in pro football. Again, Thank congratulations. You, you did this a whale of a job. This is the greatest one here. Uh, just 
tickled uh, to be a part of it, uh, to be in there playing, and uh, I know Johnny, Johnny will be back, too. Good. Thank you very much, Earl Marl. And now out on the field, and Bill Ennis. All right. Thank you very much, Kyle. We are here with some very, very happy young ladies. I'll tell you, I think they're all dreaming up ways to spend Super Bowl uh, championship money, and we're going to go quickly around and let you meet them because they are a happy bunch, and they've been replaying this finish a million times. First of all, we'd like to bring in Mrs. McCafferty, the head coach. Congratulations. Did you think they could do it? I always thought they could do it, but there's always that doubt in the back of your mind, and I'm just so very, very grateful. We've got some boys that are playing for the, us that you can't believe what they put out. It's phenomenal. Well, I know your husband and his staff have also done an outstanding job, and I know they wanted this one worse than anything else, especially after two years ago. Yeah, that means an awful lot, and I can't tell you how happy I am for Earl Morrill. Very good. Thank you very much, Mrs. McCaverty. Best of luck. All right, let's go around and uh, meet the ladies now. And maybe just have your name as we go around, please. Judy Nowatsky. Judy, your husband had a tremendous game. Thank you. Thank you. Marsha Hinton. Marsha, congratulations. Ella Mitchell. Mitchell, good. congratulations to you. Jenny Ball, Sandra Lee, Janet Maxwell, Pam Grant. Pam, congratulations. Is this a young one here? This is hers. And your name? Candy Jefferson. Your Roy's wife. And is this uh, little Roy? What's your name? Marshall. Marshall? Congratulations. Are you proud of your daddy today? Played a whale of a game, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. All right, let's go on around. Sylvia Mackey. I'm John Mackey's secretary. Jane Morrill, Earl. Jane, congratulations. I know you're quite proud. Kyle just finished talking to Earl, and he had a tremendous ball game. And I know, for Earl especially, that it was uh, it was something to come back in this one after the game of two years ago. You know, I think it's fate. I just can't believe it's like the ending to a fairy tale. I, it's unreal. It's unreal. Gloria Stuke. Charlene Miller, and I'm the happiest woman on this earth. <laughs> Charlene, I know you are. I hope we're getting some faces and not just my back. Here's some more back here. Carolyn Perkins. Congratulations. Lorraine Sullivan. Judy Maddy. Sue Hill. Congratulations to you. Marie Hilton. We got another one. Let's get... What? The <laughs> wonderful game. Fanny right? Logan. Fanny, congratulations. How about that interception? Huh? Praise the Lord for that interception. Okay. As you can tell, a very, very happy bunch of women here, and uh, $15,000 uh, richer these families for winning this Super Bowl, an exciting finish it was, and as you can tell, they are just uh, out of their minds right now. We'll be back with more on the Let's Go Board in just a moment. Kyle Road in the world champion Baltimore Colts locker room once again, and we have the man who did it with his toe, the rookie from the University of Cincinnati, Jim O'Brien. Jim, uh, I know there's probably no way to describe the thrill, but try it. Uh, I can't really describe it. Uh, matter of fact, it made me cry, and I usually don't cry very much. I'm usually pretty uh, sullen. And I, I can't really describe it. It's the greatest thing in the world. That you know, probably ever happened to me as long as I live. Jim, before you kicked, uh, we had shots of you over on the sideline. You were hurting. We don't know what the extent of the injury was. What was it? No, on the uh, kickoff before that, uh, I got I hit a helmet right on the knee because it was a bad kick, and I was afraid a guy would break right up the middle, and I didn't want that, you know, most of all. So... Uh, I guess I hit somebody's helmet right on my knee on the patella, and it kind of stung a little. Well, if you're ready for the thrill all over again, let's take a look at that uh, game-winning kick that you made with just nine seconds left to go in the ball game. I think the ball... Here we go, Jim. Yeah, well, Earl Reddy calls the signals. Here comes a snap from Tom Good. His uh, linemen are blocking excellently. I kept my head down, which was unusual, and uh, I guess it went through. It kind of curved to the uh, right a little, and then went back through the middle. As the, you kicked it, at the moment you kicked it, did you think you had enough on it? Uh, I, yeah. Oh, yeah. I hit the ball well. Uh, it's a really good, solid hit. It's not the only one I had all day, as a matter of fact. Well, of course, this one was with just five seconds left to go when the ball went through the crossbars. Against San Diego earlier in the year, you had one. A little lot more time to take. Yeah, it was a 28-yard field when I had a whole minute. <laughs> but they didn't call time out or anything, so... <laughs> but, Jim, as a single guy, you'll be able to uh, spend your $15,000 uh, in great fashion, I'm sure. And I'm sure you saved a lot of guys a lot of money. Here. Yeah, well, I guess I got them all on me. <laughs> Congratulations again, Jim. A tremendous you, effort, Bob. tremendous pressure kick. Okay. And now let's talk to Mike Curtis, 
the great middle linebacker for Baltimore. Mike, well, congratulations to you. Just tremendous. There is where your fans uh, back in Baltimore and across the country are. Hi, Mom tremendous. and Dad. Hi, <laughs> Mom and Dad, and Karen and Dick and Marty and uh, Kenny and Patty. And, uh, no, that's all I can think of. That's it. What were you most concerned about, Mike, when you went into this thing? Uh, the way it turned out, you all stopped Dallas's running game pretty good, particularly well, in the first half. That was our, uh, really our preoccupation was to stop the running full game. Uh, we figured if we could stop that, bottle it up, he'd have to throw more. And uh, as you know, he hasn't been that active in his throwing, you know. So uh, we, I think we did pretty good on the stop of the running. Well, of course, you came up with uh, the key interception, uh, the one to turn the ball game around when it looked like Dallas might be going for field goal position. You saved it to set up your own field goal, and we'd like to take another look at that. And you can describe it, if you will. Yeah, I want to see it. Uh, it bounced off Reeves' hands, I think. Uh, I'm drifting over here in the... I'm just drifting over to try to help with the tackle, and the ball is just lucky. landed right in my hands. I couldn't help but catch it. And then I looked around to see where everybody was, and I gave my old fullback moves and started moving out. Try to get as close as I could. Someone tried to tackle. See that move there? Fantastic. Anyway, I fell down knowing I didn't want to fumble. That was it. Uh, Mike, that uh, little move you made there was worth a lot of money to a lot of people in this game. It's worth a, it's worth a damn big ring. That's what it's worth. The World Championship. That's what it's worth. Mike, congratulations again. A tremendous job by you and all of the Colts. Good luck to you. Thank you, And now, we'll be back with more of the Super Bowl story right after this message. We're talking now with Bill Curry, offensive center for the world champion Baltimore Colts. And the world champion Baltimore Colts sounds pretty good, doesn't it, Bill? Kyle, it sounds better than anything in my own experience in athletics. Uh, I've been on a couple of world champion teams with the Packers, and that was wonderful, and I love those guys, but I don't think I've ever been on a team where it was quite so difficult, and I think the more difficult things are, the more you appreciate it. Well, that's well said, and uh, the more difficult things that we saw you do out on the field today was the blocking. You, wrestler, uh, doing tremendous, particularly a short trap block there once when Norm Bulick came right up the middle. Well, Kyle, I wish we'd had more success running the ball. Uh, we were not pleased at all with our performance today. We did not execute well on offense, which was quite obvious. And uh, like the coaches say, I'd have to see the film before I'd know exactly why. We, we did have some success up the middle, and uh, for that we were happy. But we never got sustained drives like we had hoped to do. But our defense was outstanding, and that was the difference. Bill, I guess your third appearance in a Super Bowl game was probably your happiest. I think that'd be a safe statement. By far. It was the most dramatic and uh, certainly the happiest. Congratulations again. Bill Curry, offensive center for the world champion Baltimore Colts. And now let's be talking with John Mackey, a big tight end. How are you, John? Congratulations, Kyle. Listen, that was a great little catch you pulled off, a little coup you pulled off against the Cowboys on that long touchdown run. Yeah, well, we didn't have it on a game plan, but uh, it worked out real well for us. Uh, it was an individual to uh, Eddie Hinton, and I was trying to clear out that area, and uh, I think they went to his own defense, and uh, they were sort of like doubling on uh, Eddie, and uh, when... Uh, the ball was hit two or three times, but the last man that hit it was a defender, and I knew it was good. Well, you better hope it was hit at least two, huh? <laughs> well, I knew it was at least two. <laughs> John, we're going to try and set this play up and see if we can see it. Uh, if our facilities are as such right now, we'll take another look at that touchdown play. And as John Mackey mentioned, it was a pass intended for Eddie Hinton, the wide receiver on the left. Coming up now, John. Yeah, um... I was trying to clear it out, and then, as you see, it's, uh, it's hit right there, then it's hit again, it's hit by Eddie, then it's hit again by a defender, and I caught it, and then I uh, did my 9-1. And that muscle pulled didn't bother you at all, did it? Oh, no, 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 not now. I tell you, you know, um, like I had my problems early in the year, but like um, right now, man, I'm 150%. And it's good to be a champion. And 150% better to bank, too, huh? <laughs> well, I tell you, you know, uh, you can make money working, but uh, you can't walk down the street and have them call you a champion unless you earn it on the field. Uh, congratulations, you know, John. John, Thank a great effort, really. Thank you. You and all the Baltimore Colts. And now let's go to Bill Ennis in the clubhouse of the Dallas Cowboys. All right, thank you very much, Kyle. We're talking with Tom Landry. Tom, a case of uh, too many turnovers for one thing this afternoon, right? Well, it was. We uh, we felt we couldn't afford the turnovers. It's uh, the turnovers were the type that you hate to see. They're all tip passes off for us, you know, instead of off for what they were doing. And uh, from that standpoint, it was a very disappointing afternoon. Was your game plan followed as you like for it to be? Uh, you were calling the plays over there. Were things going in the first half especially? It seemed like you had all the momentum in the world going your way. Well, we really did. We were down in with opportunities to score twice there, and we were unable to put the plays together when we had them uh, open there 
uh, in the first quarter. Had to settle for two field goals. Of course, I thought the real turning point for Baltimore was when we went down the third quarter and should have went in to score, and we had the fumble, then they got the ball. And of course, that gave them a lot of momentum. But even you know, after that, we had chances to win the ball game, or we had it on the last few minutes there. When we got the next tip pass that went for an interception, they came back to win the game. Did Baltimore do anything that you did not expect? No, not really. They played just about where what we would, thought they would play. And, uh, of course, our defense was playing a tremendous ball game and on defense. And, and uh, of course, I'm disappointed uh, for the players more than anything else because they, I've never seen a team fight back so hard as they have through these last eight, nine weeks to get here. And, and from that standpoint, it's a very disappointing day. Well, Coach Landry, I know the Dallas Cowboys are a class football team, and they'll come back again next year. And thank you very much for talking with us. Fine. My pleasure. All right, let's go now once again uh, to uh, a commercial. We'll have a word from Gillette and be right back with more on our post-game show. And hard-earned touchdown. I think uh, you went after him four times on the goal line just before the half and missed. But uh, in the fourth quarter, you came through, Tom. Well, it was the same play that we ran twice. The first time I ran it a little bit too tight, and I got back to the huddle and told Earl to call again, and Earl had enough confidence to come back with it, and we got it. You, uh, as I remember, I think you were driving right through uh, one of their linebackers met you about a foot inside the field of play. You drove right through him. Uh, I think Earl had good choice in going back to you a second time. Well, I, I all we need is a yard and a half, and I saw the blue shirt coming, and I saw the daylight inside, and I put my head down, and he hit me on the left side, and we just sort of glanced off him into the end zone. Tom, in your history, there's a nice way. Well, we have a chance now to take a look at that touchdown again, and we'd appreciate your commenting on it as it uh, comes up. I think of course, Tom Mitchell had a real good block on the linebacker, and then there was a uh, extra linebacker they put in for safety man uh, that that hit me. I think it was number 56. I'm not sure. 56 or safety man. There he is, 56, right there. 56 was uh, Tom Stenchik of Dallas, and of course you got some excellent blocking from uh, Vogel Rensler on the left side. Yes, and Tom Mitchell in particular because he's the man on the end of that line. So uh, I'm happy to. <laughs> that we won. Hey, Tom, congratulations. I know uh, you're coming to the ball club. In fact, they mentioned they had you uh, coming as a linebacker. That's a pretty good uh, switch for a linebacker to go to well, a hard-running fullback. I really uh, can't tell you what it's like to be here because it's Tuesday before the opening game. I was out of the job, and here I am uh, wearing the ring of the world champions. And, uh, <laughs> and on top of that, we tried to give them the game every way possible, and yet we, we hung in there and did what we had to do to win. Congratulations to you again. Tom Nowatsky, fullback for the world champion Baltimore Colts. And now, if we can, I think he's uh, just about in his dress uniform here to make a national TV appearance. Johnny United, how are you I'm feeling? I'm a stripper, Cal. I just haven't get to the shower yet. What happened, and how are you ripped? I feel pretty good. They, uh, Andre got to me in a rib cage, and uh, I don't know if they're broken or not, but uh, they're pretty sore and uh, kind of a little tough to breathe right now. But they had me shot up pretty good. I could have gone back and played if Mac wanted me to go in. John, you won world championships against the New York Giants in the sudden death game that I remember very well in 1958. It looked like for a moment you might be involved in another. Were you ready to come out if it did? I was ready. I was in here until about two minutes of the third quarter, so I really didn't get to see what was going on. But uh, I, when I came out, I threw the ball, and it didn't bother me. It had a little pain in there, but I could have thrown the ball without any problem. And, and for Mac of that, then it was strictly up to his decision. I think that uh, I was happy for Earl that he done, uh, did such a fine job because after the 68 uh, Super Bowl, he was kind of down in the dumps, and I think the reporters all picked on him pretty good. And I'm uh, just happy for him because he's a tremendous person. Well, Johnny, I think everyone across the country respects you uh, as perhaps one of the greatest quarterbacks that ever played this game. This is a nice way to cap off 15 years. I assume you're going for another 15. Uh, let's just try one at a time. <laughs> Well, listen, you did great. Earl, of course, filled in beautifully for you. And we congratulate you very much on the World Championship. Now, Another one for you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Now to the Dallas Cowboys clubhouse and Bill Lennon. All right, thank you, Kyle. We have middle linebacker Leroy Jordan. Jo uh, Leroy, a tough ball game today. I know the Cowboys, you could tell, especially in the first quarter, you were ready. Well, Bill, we felt we were ready. We knew we were going to play to win, and that's what we did. We just didn't uh, play long enough, I guess. They got the field goal right there at the end and beat us. We were hoping we were in field goal position. You know, if we moved for a first down, we'd have got to kick the field goal. It would have been a little different game. How about this Dallas defense? You tell me before the interview you still think it's solid. You still think it'll come back and be in this championship game again. Uh, we're real proud of it. We think we've got a great defensive team, and uh, it's going to be back next year and for several years to come. Leroy, thank you for talking with us. And now let's go back up to Kurt Gotti. 
might be interested in just a few of these simple final statistics. Baltimore outgained Dallas 329 yards to 217. Uh, most of them uh, by passing. And neither team had impressive passing efficiency. 11 out of 25 for Baltimore, 12 out of 26 for Dallas. In rushing, it was Dallas 104 yards, and Baltimore managed 69 yards. Individually, the leading rusher in the game was Garrison. Uh, Garrison picked up 65 yards, and the Colts held Dwayne Thomas to only 37 yards on the ground today. Tom Nowatsky, the cast-off from the Lions, was the leading rusher, and he got a big touchdown. He had 33 yards. In passing, Unitas was 3 out of 9, Morrill was 7 out of 15, Morton was 12 out of 26. Uh, Jefferson caught three passes to lead the Colts, and uh, Reeves caught five, mostly short ones, along with Thomas for four, to lead the Dallas Cowboys. But it was the turnovers that actually turned it around, of course. Baltimore was turning the ball over early. They wound up with seven turnovers, five in the first half. Dallas lost only one fumble, but two costly interceptions in the last eight minutes of the game cost them the world championship. And so Baltimore has won it. And almost uh, lost away is the fact that Baltimore now has won seven in a row. They talked about the Dallas winning streak. Baltimore has the one going. It was a, a scratch season for Baltimore. They just barely beat San Diego to open it. Then they lost to Kansas City. And they just got by Boston and Houston. And then they started a gel. And they came on, and they're the world champs now. I think uh, it seems like two days ago, but Joe Namath predicted a Baltimore victory. When we did the show two days ago, he grabbed me just before he went off there and said, I want to say something about the field goal. I think Baltimore will win by a field goal. It'll be that close. Mr. Namath called it right on the nose. On behalf of all of us here at NBC, Kurt Gowdy hoping that you enjoyed, I think, one of the greatest pro football games I've ever seen. The more Orioles and Gary Cowan with the shot to be heard around the world. Or Jim O'Brien, who will always remember Sunday, January the 17th, Super Bowl Day. The Baltimore Colts versus the Dallas Cowboys. One of the most weird of all football games. Six fumbles and six interceptions in a game played on a beautiful afternoon in Miami. And it was a fumble which set up the first score. Mike Tark's 14-yard field goal for Dallas. Craig Morton, the Dallas quarterback, who was to have several agonizing moments, was even caught on a rare infraction, grounding the ball. The penalty cut short a drive, and Dallas was forced to settle for another field goal, this time from 30 yards by Clark. Not only did fumbles and interceptions interrupt offensive strategy, the game had more than its share of strange happenings such as that which occurred with the Colts trailing by only six points. Baltimore's gained only four yards passing. Unitas is one out of four. On third and ten, he's drawing, and it's over the head of Hinton. That is going to be an incomplete pass. If it was not touched by Dallas, if Dallas, Dallas may have ticked that ball. You cannot have a completion from one offensive man to another offensive man. And that's what the Cowboys are arguing. We'll see if we can see it. And here comes the ball. We'll see how many touch it. No, he didn't quite. Yes, it looked like somebody tipped it. Johnny Unitas may be the most revered of all Baltimore athletes, but the Cowboys showed him no respect whatever. When he was forced to carry the ball, it was a form of suicide. Leroy Jordan and Dan Howley crushed number 19. The fumble recovery by Jethro Pugh led to Dallas's first touchdown, scored on a short swing pass, Craig Morton to Dwayne Thomas, an outstanding National League rookie. Shortly afterwards, the enthusiasm of Dallas's doomsday defense may have turned into the game's major error. The rush forced Unitas into a hasty pass, an interception, but George Andre put on the finishing touch with a devastating tackle. At the time, it seemed innocent enough, but Unitas took a long time getting up. He never returned. Earl Morrill, who had been humiliated two years before by the New York Jets, took over, and so did the Colts. No matter what the Cowboys tried, the Colts were there to make life miserable. Rick Volk made it that way on a deflection, an interception, and a dashing return to the Dallas three-yard line.
It took the Colts only a couple of plays to score the touchdown. The point after tied the score, 13-13, to set up the pulsating finish. Now watch it. They blocked the last point. Dallas is very good at blocking these points. Morrow will set it up for O'Brien. It could tie it if they get it through. The kick is... Good, it's a tie game. Now let's see if Baltimore uses its timeouts to get the ball with a minute and nine seconds to go. Both teams have played it cautiously here. Dallas now back on their own 27-yard line. A second down. 35 yards to go. Slot right. Morton being chased by Bubba Smith. Unlo intercepted by Mike Curtis. Mike Curtis intercepts. And Baltimore has a chance now to win it. Jim O'Brien, in his first regular pro season game, kicked the field goal in the last minute to beat San Diego. He's been slightly erratic at times. He says that is the kick he'll always remember. What about this one? $15,000 riding on this kick for the Colts. 13 to 13 tie, nine seconds to go. All right, here you are now. What a spot. And the kick is up. The kick is good. Jim O'Brien with five seconds. The Colts lead 16 to 13. Quarterback Earl Morrill enjoyed his Super Bowl vindication. I tell you, this is what uh, we work for, and it is a great feeling being on this side, on the winning side, and uh, uh, just happy to be here, I tell you. Uh,